All right. Yay, we're back. Hey guys. That was such hey, a dramatic to intro. I know. Well, it's the, it. it's like it's the it's the standard like stream yard. Um it's the free like, stuff. The free stuff, yeah. That's <laughs> I love it. I love the free stuff. <laughs> the free stuff's always good. That's we all we, we like for <laughs> we like free stuff. <laughs> Yeah. love free stuff <laughs> yeah so welcome everybody to the will reads yeah episode six uh yeah episode oh, season six episode four i don't even know where we are um <laughs> the old six four the what old up? six four <laughs> yeah Good i time. see you threw me right under the bus as to why we were late yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to find an excuse on why we're ready late and really you're I don't not wrong Chris under the bus. Uh, just throw him under the bus so um I, I i usually throw chris under the bus so it's um yeah i'm, I'm cool with that too now it's <laughs> chris's <laughs> wife by extension chris i have a yeah, master's like, degree so does not mean i get like 15 minutes isn't that how it works isn't i that, think that, so i think so <laughs> we in theater we call it the equity eight because if it's a it's a union show it's going to start eight minutes late mm -hmm. there, you there, you there you go equity yep. eight. Equity eight. <laughs> sounds good <laughs> So uh, a couple of announcements before we get into anything. No new patrons this week. However, we are doing a ton of giveaways right now. Um, are, we are coming forth, right? Only one giveaway going on right now. That's on Facebook. So if you're not following us on Facebook, go over there. Because I'm giving away a hardcover copy of the Wheel of Time book of your choice. Uh, you just get to pick one, and I'll send you a hardcover copy of any Wheel of Time book you want. It's a scam, guys. I never win. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you guys are like eligible. Every time. <laughs> I try my hardest and I never win. You, you guys are not eligible. Uh, <laughs> Somebody else always beats me. Yeah, someone else always does. But you know who is eligible? Ellie and Gus are. And guess who our guests are? Ellie and Gus from The Wheel Takes. So hey, transition, <laughs> Alan. Are you a podcaster? What there a good go. transition. Hey, I try. I try. <laughs> no. um, yeah. So welcome <laughs> back, guys. Um, this is you guys' second time coming on our podcast. Um, it is. First Thanks time for having us back. First time you guys broke the record, so I gave you kind of a little bit of a slower <laughs> chapters. So. Yeah, I was going to ask. I, I was going to ask, did you give us slower chapters just so that we wouldn't talk to you until two in the morning? Is that what uh, happened? Yeah, because that won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris might take a little nap, but, you know. <laughs> I would I would be so into it if Chris just like laid down and napped right yeah. in front of the camera. He's gone now. It, it happens yeah, sometimes. He's, he's walking away already. <laughs> he's he realized he forgot his book. He's gonna watch us. He needs so his book and his snack. He said, I'm yeah. out of here. I already had my snack, but he'll have some pudding at some point. Yeah. No, um, I'm fasting right now, so okay. there will be no snacks tonight. It's all oh, water. No, no I sneak a Diet Coke. Oh, okay. We came prepared. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You got the original cover. Mm -hmm. yeah. With yeah. SpongeBob Square Rand. I got the yeah. cheap Mine's Amazon boring. cover. Oh, we both got the cheap Amazon cover. Yeah. yeah. All off all, all 45 books for 130 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's a deal. That's a steal. But if you want it for free, go to our Facebook. Uh the reads on Facebook, and you can enter to win a book. Uh that contest, the drawing's not till July 1st, so. I'm time. shaken by these transitions. They are just Too good. flawless, <laughs> mm -hmm. flawless transition. Also, another quick announcement is uh, we do have a, our game show coming back this Saturday. We did our first one with Ian and a few of our mods um, uh, a few weeks ago. And so we're That's doing fine. what of fortune it's wheel of fortune, but wheel of time related And our guests are our contestants. This weekend, that's gonna be Saturday, July, or June twenty fifth. So if you're listening to podcasts and not watching on YouTube, you gotta you missed it. You still check it out because uh, it's still be on YouTube. But uh, our contestants are the way of the leaf. So we got brother Dan, brother Ryan, oh, nice. and and Case and I. So it's going to be a blast. Um, that should be that fun. Absolutely fun. Yeah, and we'll have to get Alan Gus to come play Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Time. Fortune. I love mm -hmm. games. What of all kinds. To be. Get him on the there. spreadsheet, Alan. I okay. am oh, competitive. It is not a cute look, and I refuse to change. <laughs> so, what, 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 the um, the suggestion that we had from my moderators, and I have to talk to the, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to call them out live on YouTube right now. But the suggestion was to have you two on, and then Danny and Brett, and have the wheel team, um, uh, all the wheels, <laughs> all the wheels. I mean, there's a theme because you sense. can have you can have four contestants at the same time. The wheels on the bus go round and round. 
Yeah. Round and round, round and round. So that'd be fun. Um, round I, and round yes. and round because the wheel. I also think to next Jordan Con, all of us first time reader podcasts should have like some kind of merch. Like, uh, like I was suggesting earmuffs. Mm. Um, let's say Raffo on them or something mm. like that. That would be oh, perfect. That'd be nice. that'd be great. And that should be on our ribbon too. That Alan's Ooh. getting for us. Currently, like raffling. I, I have like a that. lot of ribbons that that I'm getting for you guys, so there it's gonna go. be. That yeah, are no, like, don't talk to us. Yeah, to Ali, don't forget, Ali and Jess are also getting a room <laughs> so that we can like have our own first time reader room. Yeah, there there's gonna go. be there's gonna be easing the possum uh, ribbon. Uh, <laughs> 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 I love that. If you know, you know. There you go. If you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So there are so some things that do? I coveted. Like I saw like, them I on other on people Indian. and went, I have to find them. Like the North Harbor one, I oh, needed I yeah. with my whole heart. So, yeah. great. so I tracked some people down. It was a little aggressive, but yeah. <laughs> I, I did the same thing. So I was like, where'd you get that ribbon? It was the guy wearing the hat in the corner. I was like, okay, I'm going to go find him. So yeah, I'm going to go find him. <laughs> it became a scavenger hunt for me. It, it was fun. Um, yeah. Chris, you're, you're asking a question? Oh, no, you're fine. Just. No, I said, are we going to have to be like, um, did he poop? He, I pooped on Ian. Is that how oh. you're going to get the. <laughs> you had to poop on Ian to get the. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That is not how you earn the ribbon. Yeah. Here first and last. I don't know. I, I'm gonna go to Ryan Jordan Con and go, I heard that you get that from pooping on it. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna tell everybody. Saturday night I wear all white and just yeah. Oh, with chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> well, considering that you did get pooped on last time you were at Jordan Con, just not by a human. Yeah. 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 He true. eased the possum. That you know of. <laughs> uh, ah, that's true. <laughs> Ian's exactly like, right. that I know of. There Saturday night got a little wild. At the dance party. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys. Was that the joke? Was that the I, joke? I just, I just realized that. I went, oh, that's right. That happened. That I happened. Forgot. <laughs> Can't I make was this very late. I was, yeah. I was very tired at the time. <laughs> it was, it was very late at night. Um, and I might have had something to do with letting the possum in the hotel. I'm not gonna. <laughs> confirm, <laughs> confirm or deny that. <laughs> Pulling a little Matt Cough in there. Yeah. Well, Are I had to eat go time? catch it. Yeah, I'm I like pretty sure, pretty sure Alan was shooting chat, it. In. By the way, it's like you know, do a fill in the blank and ask people what chapter you're on so they can get a a ribbon. Ha <laughs> ha. Or my like name that. is and leave it blank on the name tag. I like those ideas. Great. Yeah. See, so, yeah, I so like got that. some good ideas. <laughs> some but good I'm ideas. on chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Raffoing so, on chapter. Dope. Uh, yes. Yeah, leave, leave a blank one so you can fill out what chapters you're on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, good. that's a good idea. Yeah, book six, chapter whatever. Yeah, I think uh, everyone uh, should live in fear of us, the first time readers. Everyone yeah. should be afraid we're, of us. We're taking over. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, don't feel like people were scared enough of me. Our ribbon should be black with red writing. <laughs> if none of y'all have been to Jordan Con before, they actually are pretty protective of first time readers. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was moments where Chris or I think Ali can attest this as well was in like a panel and people like stop the panel yes. and rush them out. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah. Get them yeah, out of here. Really cute. It was like, wait, Chris is here. Stop the show. That was karaoke for me. Everyone would scream, Allie, get the fuck out. Because someone would come up and be like, this is a song about the last battle. And everyone would be like, Allie, get the fuck out. And I'd run yeah. out with my earmuffs That's on. why, yeah. That's why I got to have those, those first time reader earmuffs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very cute. I loved it. It was so much fun. A lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. Uh, personal life. What's going on? Um, you know, I don't even know what. So, I guess my fun thing was yesterday I was off work. Um, I didn't know I was off work uh, for Juneteenth. Um, the email that corporate sent out did not tell us we were off. But last week I was sick, so I didn't go into the office all last week. I worked from home, and apparently they put the flyers on the doors to all the offices, but they didn't. <laughs> well, tell I was people. About to say he like sent us an, a text message like, "Yeah, we got all these cool things that we could do, but we weren't. Yeah, told we were off. We were told we were off. So I put a suit on, go to work, and then I see the sign. We're closed <laughs> for Juneteenth. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna go home. Get home. My wife's like, okay, you're off today. Cool. Go pick uh, our son up from daycare. We're going to Bush Gardens. So yesterday. 
I went to it's a theme park around here, Bush Gardens, uh, and um, which was fun. My son got to ride a new ride, and he actually liked it, a, a older kid ride. So um, that was fun, um, and we had a good time. That's and that, and then pretty much everything else in my personal life is just getting ready for this weekend with the game show and um and and nothing else. I but the podcast and 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 my kids are what revolves around my entire life at this point. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> cool. Uh, someone asked which ride. It was Escape from Pompeii. Uh, oh, if you that know, one's if, fun. Yeah. So if, if anybody knows that one, you go up in a Lego boat and it goes through and there's fire and statues. Was the fire working? The fire was working. Yeah. And the statues Every fall over. And then, and then you go down a big slide with a big splash at the end. Yeah. It's fun. It's a fun one. It's yeah. so fun. Cool. So yeah. Fun times. Is your son your oldest? I have two sons, but yes, my son that went on. Yeah. Your, the, the, your, yeah. Your daycare son. <laughs> yeah, take your son, Mr. Oldest. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, four and a half. Um, so was a little young to be on that ride, but at the same time, um, he's he was just tall enough. So I was like, hey, let's go try it out. Uh, and he he really liked it. Uh, whereas um, my youngest son is seventeen weeks old, so they won't let him on those kind of rides. So tiny, yeah, <laughs> yeah so that, tiny. I can see how that would cause. Care, care him in a roller coaster. I'm gonna hold him tight, guys. We're gonna, I'll, just yeah. hold him. I'll just hold him. I'll just hold him. We gotta we gotta start them early. Um, Strap them in on one of those carriers and see if they notice. Yeah, just put them on my shirt. Like it. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it works in Kenobi, I'm sorry, spoilers for Kenobi, where you just wrap a coat around something and you go through like a bunch of uh, yeah, nobody you know, notices. Yeah, notices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can work on push buttons, right? <laughs> like, yeah, they don't pay those kids enough to care. Yeah, they it's really true. don't, and they're so short staffed now. It's like, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. Ra scramble your child's brain. I don't care. <laughs> I'm 17. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, we, we've just hit airspace as far as uh viewership. So oh, that's awesome. we're, we're in the mile high club. We're you were high club. We should send her a shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for that. Kate Wright gets a shot glass for doing this in the mile high club. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's worth some merch. W watching us live on an airplane. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so what about you guys? What's what's going on personal life wise? Uh, I can never remember what I said last time. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I told y'all I got a, a really cheap car from a meth head or crackhead. One of the two. Yes. I'll tell you guys yeah, about you that. Did tell us that. Mm -hmm. did you fix that? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Everything that needed to get fixed, I was able to fix for a lot cheaper than I thought. So I kind of beefed up what I'm putting into the sound system. Uh, so I'm in the process of that right now. I got the deck and all the doors taken apart. And Are you running some... lights and everything too? Running lights? No, no lights. Like the extra bling. And if he wants a new paint job on it, I'm going to leave that for him. Gotcha. Um, but hopefully he'll be the kid that likes having a little bit of a sleeper car. They're like, oh my gosh, look at that hoopty until they hear it and then watch him zip by. Uh, he, he might appreciate that. I don't know. So that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. Um, car work, stereo work. Oh, uh, I did find out that they are putting me in the at home recovery. Uh, I told you, I, yeah, I, I finally got to see my MRI like months later with one of the doctors and they're like, Oh yeah, this is pretty bad. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been telling you guys. They're like, well, you see, <laughs> you seem like you were getting better. Uh, yeah. But You're like, like, like tolerance for pain keeps increasing. That's all. <laughs> exactly. We've talked about this a couple times. Um, I, I like, I feel bad. There's been times in my life where in my mind, I was a little judgy with people that just complained about chronic and, and long-term pain. And I'm like, you look fine. You know, you're laughing with the rest of us. No big deal. But the truth is you do kind of get used to it or, or you get, you accept it. I don't know if it's getting used to, but it's always there sort of thing. Anyways. Um, but the last doctor I sat down and looked at it and was like, yeah, you still need months of PT, Cairo, they're going to do steroid injections, all the things you could possibly do to avoid surgery. The orders are for 180 days. Uh, it may not take that long, but I could potentially be getting paid to just go to physical therapy and chill out at the house for 180 days. And that would be very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I might coach the swim team here at the pool. I mean, just for oh, something to do. You there know? you go. Yeah, yeah. got to stay busy. I'm in PT. It's a time. Yeah, it's yeah. Fun. Are you going yeah. back to your civilian gig, or you can't do anything? Uh, well, because I work for the DoD on the civilian side, I can't. I can't go back while I'm still on orders. 
Uh, no double dipping right now. Okay. No, I was I, gonna say, I'm then, gonna be okay hanging out during the summer and just chilling. Did, chilling. Does, the, does the does the contractor still pay you out while you're on orders? <laughs> So I, the reason why the reason why I ask, I have a friend that's I have a friend that's a contractor was a contractor at Booz Allen, and he was also uh, Air Force Reserves, and he took orders on purpose because in his contract, if he got orders and called up, they still had to pay him his contract pay while he is getting paid extra for his orders. So okay, he took he took every single opportunity to not go to his actual job and still get paid for his actual job. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I thought you were making a really poor joke on no uh, no 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 no. So no, I'm no, no. A, I'm a government employee, and, oh, I, not man- a contractor, and I, I manage contracts. So <sighs> if the contractors were paying me, whether I was on orders or not, <laughs> I would go to jail. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. That's why I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> not, All right, government employee versus, versus contractor. Right. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of good at my job, but not good enough to go work for the contractors. contractors. I just don't care that much. I'm not going to work a 60 hour work week. Never. So I work for the government instead. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Look, I'm still better than average there, man. I, I I can work two out of the five days a week and outshine everybody else. So I'm not. (laughs) Yeah. Sounds good. Chris, what's going on with your personal life? I was gonna say I enjoy the fact that you're actually in a comfortable spot, Ian. Like that's just been I'm loving it. Like I look at the depressing, pillows. like Good wood pressure. The the daggone uh college bed in the background. Like, worse, you know. worse than a college dorm for a bed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad to see your home. Uh for me this past week, let's see. Um I was just on the, the phone with LG because I realized our one year is almost up. So anything that's wrong with it, I'm reporting. So they were give me a new TV and a new warranty. Oh, nice. I'm not paying for a new warranty <laughs> when I can just get a new one. Uh, <laughs> so like, I set calendar reminders for when my warranties are up and I fully inspect them. And if there's the least bit wrong, if it's covered by warranty. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Cars, that's all smart. of it. Take well, advantage. Call- Cars, they'll call you. They call me like five times a day. Yeah, that's true. Your so car is about to expire. Sort of thing. They got me in my fortune cookie the other day. It was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> they just whisper, uh, I'm gone about your extended warranty. <laughs> so, no, we are actually like making a lot of headway with the wedding stuff. We've actually signed a bunch of contracts. So, it's exciting to see your work come to fruition and then to know that somebody else is getting paid for your work is kind of depressing, but it is what it is. I'm pretty much planning this whole wedding myself. The, the wedding planners have done a couple of things and they're making a grip and I'm helping to pay it. So, you know, tell me how that works. I will tell you, I will tell you having them day of the wedding planner day That's of nice. is such is so clutch. Yeah, they make yeah. every you don't have to do anything day of. Allie, yeah. do you know me? You don't know me. Right. Well. How could I be so thoughtless? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like the day of, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I'm still gonna be there. Like, did you do did you take care of? Is this done? Like, so even day of, I'm gonna still be you, down you know, back. You know that's my wife used to do, right? Day of. Uh no, I did not know that. I'll have yeah. to trust to do that. Oh, and, uh, and she it. will run a show, a tight ship. I know she did. I worked for her. I was on a track team with her. I had nothing to worry about if I had realized that. I would have just been like, yeah, I got I got the person. And then I could have saved on a plate because yeah. you know, hers would have been rolled into the other costs. Oh well. <laughs> Oh, anyway, exactly. It is what it is. I learned, live and learn. But um, yeah, the my wedding planner is so tired of me. She hired an assistant. <laughs> oh yeah, and I only deal with the assistant. But the assistant is phenomenal. Like if we had met her first, I have zero complaints. But the assistant's more like my assistant. She emails me. She texts me all times of the day and night and on the weekends. Like everything's getting done because she and I communicate. That's where the wedding planner is like, eh, I'll let her handle it because he's getting on my damn nerves. And I know I do it on purpose. I push your button. I want you to work for your money. She's getting paid a lot of money, like half yeah. my year, annual take home almost. A, a good mm. wedding planner has got to be like high energy all the time. They're because not have, cheap too. Yeah. You have people that are planning like the biggest day of their life, uh, sometimes more than a year in advance. 
and yet you're having weddings like what daily every couple of days yeah. maybe a couple mm -hmm. of day if in certain areas so like you're constantly catering to people that are no. making such a huge deal the about amount the of money this woman is charging she's probably doing maybe seven weddings a year oh really oh hey oh, wow when i so i, I don't well, mind she better do it right then <laughs> her set rate is 10 grand Woo. and then she mm. makes 15 percent past that on anything that she brings anybody she brings in oh Oof. man well man, now i'm gonna like, be all judgy now i'm gonna be looking around and be well, like yeah, I Chris, was this it. your idea or her idea and if you're like it's her idea i'd be like mm -mm. oh no i have a whole spreadsheet i got a whole <laughs> i got a whole google drive everything in there is my idea and she just took it all she's like you're phenomenal i even know how to use her 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 uh managing system better than she does oh my yeah there's she made a, a mistake and shared the her side instead of the user side with me of planning. Well, now you just need to start a side so, gig. Partner up with her after this. So 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 one of the, one of the downsides of actually marrying someone that does wedding planning for for a job um, was uh, that yeah some of the things got extremely pricey for our wedding. Like my wife did a national search for the photographer. Like it's not just hire the local person. No, we hired someone from New York City. We flew them in. Right there in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of photographers right here. No, no, we're getting the best but, of the best. We're flying in from New York. I was like, just got what? Jesse to do it. I, I would I would just pull a, a Robin Williams and like find some homeless dude and be like, bro, you hey. want five hundred bucks to take pictures at a wedding? He'll be like, Yeah, yeah. Just That's hand him a camera were, and let him go. We're getting a fifteen grand package for five because I know the mm. photographer. Oh, nice. And that was me up charging it. Nice. I was like, no, no, no. She's like, no, I want to do this for free. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just had a small heart attack. This is why I'm the just minute, saying, the minute the minute people hear again. wedding. Yeah, yeah. Tack, tack on, on the another price. zero. Yeah. Tack on another zero. Add another that zero. Sucks. Yeah. I don't know. Now so, I'm a photographer. She, she nice. is a very. I love good how involved you are in the wedding, though. Like, oh yeah, that's. I got the DJ. I got material. the photographer. I I help find the venue. I'm, we got the tasting coming up. Like, You're a keeper, I, Chris. You're a keeper. Thank the you. annoying thing about planning a wedding is I'm neurodivergent. So like planning is not my forte. And I would CC Gus on everything because he's the planner in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And they would like cut him off of the emails and, and just, just email her. me. And I'd be like, no, 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 I said, I have about 30 questions and this is just the beginning and you will get to know me very well. And after that, all the emails came to me. There you go. Oh, I love that. I love that. All right. We're at nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this will be well, a short one, guys. So we, no we, have, we, haven't, we haven't heard from, from what's going on with Alan. I haven't Jones. said I mean, God yeah. dang they, they, word. Just, they just finished this book that we're on. We did. So, I know. Yeah. so tell us so all tell about it. Simarog is grimy as she sounds. <laughs> You'll have to raffle on that one. You're gonna have oh, to man. see what happens. I mean, maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe. maybe. Uh, I feel like she's gonna get killed. A okay. Quick oh, death, and she deserves a slow one. All right. Chris is just throwing shit out there and looking at their facial like responses <laughs> and how they react. <laughs> so far, pretty, so I, far, it's really. There's gonna be a unicorn <laughs> again. Again, another unicorn, unicorn. Another unicorn. <laughs> Wait, did you guys hear that there actually is a unicorn in Wheel of Time? Yeah, everybody, everybody joked on Chris for saying, oh, and Tom's going to ride on a unicorn. And Alan's like, there is no unicorn. I mean, I know the there is a unicorn. It kind of is. A unicorn. It's yeah. a, a horse There's for the horn. horn. I mean, I feel like that counts. That's that's really counts. Counts. Some people claim that's a rhino. But yeah, I, I don't believe them. To they, that they, I they say, a horse, horse for the horn, horn is a unicorn. And yeah. some people will sell I'm me not. a $5,000 car for $1,500 because they need meth, like, immediately. <laughs> It so, could be crack. It could be crack. Or could it could have been crack? I'm touch. sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to assume <laughs> their preference. Yeah. Don't assume the, don't assume the addiction. Willy nilly. Right. So did Avi end to have a boy or a girl? <laughs> oh, they well, think what, no, it's twins. Pregnant. It's one of each, right? 
Are we going to have to Luke and figure Leia out if that's even a question that has an answer? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a question that has no answer. Jeez, Gus knows exactly where we're at, too. I've been putting up with this for at least as long as Alan. Yeah, he knows yeah so we call it Gus lighting. Yeah. He Gus yeah. lights me. So Gus and Allie, how was your week? If you'd like fine. to share. You know, we had a pretty restful weekend. Finished, uh, finished wedding thank you. Speaking of uh, Yeah, things. you'll be doing that for about... A year after you're married. No, uh-uh. no, we won't. Yeah, we finally finished that. <laughs> I'll, I'll have dog. a spreadsheet already put together with everybody's name, nice. and they're buying only things on a registries. And, and you see, the, oh, it's, so it's, they he's going to the e- evite thing or whatever, like the e cards, and just hit uh-huh. submit. And it fills it all in. So, so I, well, <laughs> I, we are going to handwrite it while we're on our oh, honeymoon, okay. so there they will be handwritten, but they will yeah. be very quickly handwritten. You will be surprised how bold some people get with that registry. That some people will send you things you did not ask for. Which mm-hmm. which we're not complaining about that. Not necessarily. Clear. Monetary donations towards our home fund and honeymoon fund. Are number every, one. Every, every I think time, that's all I'm going to have on my registry. So, so every time we've ever... Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time we've had a registry, like I've always snuck in there and like added just like gag things on there to be funny. Like with my wife, because she'll give me the link to it to add like real things, and I'll just sneak in a few things. Uh, so for the baby registry, when we had our first son, um, I added a bottle of whiskey. I hid it in there because uh, there's a ton <laughs> of stuff on there. I was like a bottle of whiskey, and it was kind of a joke. I didn't think it'd actually buy me a bottle of whiskey. Um, and if you know who Billy Graham is, like the evangelistic uh, Baptist preacher. Mm-hmm. Well, my um, uh, wife's parents, uh, uh, my mother, my mother-in-law, uh, was the personal assistant for Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's daughter. Oh, wow. And so Ruth Graham came to our wedding, and she got, bought me a bottle of Knob Creek. So I have a nice. bottle. Oh, of that's Knob hilarious. Creek from Billy Graham's daughter. All I was right. going to say that. There you go. <laughs> You know, I'm not pretty well for you. Billy Graham land, so <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it's 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 one of those really really weird things like that. Kind of like it's a little weird flex, but like it's like yeah, I got a bottle of whiskey from Billy Graham's daughter. <laughs> you keep this in your back pocket. I'd be excited about that. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So, um, I didn't even think to put that on there. Now I got to go put some yeah, yeah. Uncle Nearest, and I got to put some. I put like I put a drone on there. I put tons of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, where's my phone? I have. I, oh. Don't get any ideas. Keep going. Like, what other phenomenal things did you think of that I did not see? Uh, I was doing the good stuff. You well, got to sneak a bit. You can't put a ton of it because you'll notice. You just like one or two little things two, that yeah. you know, kind, of, mm-hmm. kind of hidden in there. <laughs> you guys ready to get in these chapters? It, like Chris said, it is after nine. Uh, sure. Let's roll. Let's, Let's go. go. All the right. Chapters Chap- won't take long. We can get back chapter, to guessing. Chapter five. Let's see here. Chapter five, a different dance. And our symbol is dice because it's a mat chapter. Hmm. Thank God dice. we have this chapter. I know. This chapter's great. Mat chapter is always critical. Great. It's so <laughs> critical. To the hey, point. those dancing moves are critical. What are, would we do yes. without Betsy? Betsy's. Without Betsy. Yeah. You know. She's have you had caribou Betsy crossing, who by the way? talk too much to get laid. <laughs> Have you had Caribou Crossing? What's Caribou Crossing? Oh, is that a liquor? Yeah. No. Shoot, you can't. So it's like no. the <laughs> he's working on Canadian. His it's Canadian version of um, fuck, the one with the horses. Blanton's. Blanton's. It's the Canadian answer for Blanton's. Okay. And it is like got a kick, boy. I'm telling you, like it feels like a moose hits you in the nuts or the. Is chest. it? Is it? Is it mapley? No, not at all. Make like, like, they make it with ca- syrup. It's like cayenne. Like it's it's like <laughs> bah, I'll hit you in the face. Yeah. When you drink I, it, do I you feel like it. hugging somebody? It's a little bit. <laughs> sorry, thing, sorry to you need a hug afterwards. My favorite thing I, is that Chris is like, it. it's nine o'clock, but it's not too late for me to talk about whiskey. <laughs> oh no, not at all. All my Canadian li- w- listeners, I will send you my address for <laughs> some caribou crossing. I think the later it gets, the more we're going to talk about whiskey. It seems like how much can I grift for some whiskey right now? Can I do it anyway? Okay. Um, so Matt chapter. Yeah. Matt chapter. So we got, we got, um, all, all of Matt's guys. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, nails, the Nelson, uh, Talmanis, uh, Daedric, Daedric, um, I don't know if pronouncing all those peeps and they're guys. the guys, and they're all talking about gambling because what else are they going to talk about? Because that's what Matt likes to do is gamble. And he's thinking about doing horse racing because he's like, maybe my luck will work. I don't know if this works for horse racing because he has that other component to it. Um, but he knows enough about horse flesh because um, 
he was into horses and the three rivers, or at least his family was horse traders. So, yeah. Alan, you just covered the whole chapter. What else are we going to do exactly. for the next 45 yeah, minutes? You're, yeah. I mean, have you ever, have you ever bet on horses? I yeah. have. Yeah. I have. Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. I've, it's I've a lot of fun. Won. Did we tell you Tom? It's a lot of fun, but your butt win? hurts so bad badly afterward to bet on horses oh bet on horses oh i thought you said been on horses and i'm uh, like yeah, so i can see your butt hurt a lot afterwards uh, <laughs> what are you what are you waiting what, you're going what am i doing what kind, what kind of horse race are you going to uh? are you placing? the fun kind <laughs> Hey, I bet you three ass max. <laughs> I bet I've been on and I was like, yeah, I've been on a horse or two. It hurts. Like after a while, you bounce up and down on the thing. Anyway, that's one horse. Yeah, that's making the highlight real. That's yeah. <laughs> clip it. Yeah. Clip it. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, we missed you. <laughs> I've missed you. Missed you. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> dice are no bloody good. I, I really think it's interesting um, that Matt will definitely take and gamble with his, I guess, higher up, the commanders of the band, because he did make the comment later on that he would never do it with the actual men. So he's going after and having fun with those that already have, which is pretty cool. He's kind of is robbing that Matt that making that decision, or is that what's in Matt's head making no, that decision? I, I, I want to say that this is a a combined thought, but I really want to give Matt because I mean, and, and this might be, of course, me thinking about the Matt from the TV series as well, and then just my idea of Matt. Matt's a really upright guy in weird places. Yeah. Like he'll never do harm to a kid which we see that later on too. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't really feel the need to cheat people. He just always wins. And that's because yeah. luck is always on his side. It's not cheating. It's just, it is what it is. It's a fact of his, his self. Yeah. So like if he had the power to like telekinesis, like the die and make them roll. I don't think he would do it. I don't think he would do that. I agree. But just knowing that, He's just a really good mathematician. It's just it. probability. Yeah. He's like, if I shake it this many times, ah, yeah, yeah. that's I get a good outcome. We need to not do the dice chapters when we're on YouTube because there's no way to. And I'm on this cup of couch. I'm like, you're just jacking off that ghost. You're just jacking off that ghost. That's right. We're, we're just we're betting on horses here. Uh, got it. Hurts. Your butt hurts afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just lost five listeners. <laughs> and the reviews roll in. And the reviews roll in. <laughs> uh, Peter's coming. Did I ever tell you my story of a horse betting where I got like screwed? No, tell us. Did yeah. it hurt? Did it hurt, it hurt I, say, I, I, got, <laughs> I got really butthurt about this one. So I went to the off track betting center. So um, it's where yeah. you can bet on any track pretty much in the entire country. And they have tons of TVs and it's a lot of fun. And um, I, I was betting on Dover Downs, which is in Delaware, um, all night long on that screen. And I did a trifecta bet, which is you guess what horse is going to come one, two, three um, in order. And I did like a $20 trifecta bet and I watched the race. Sure enough, my horses came in one, two, three, never has happened before. And I went and looked at the payout. It was a thousand to one odds on the trifecta. I was like, I just made a shit ton of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I made a twenty dollars bet. It's a thousand to one, uh, and I was like, "This is gonna be awesome." So, yeah. I am like literally shaking in excitement, and I go up to the teller, hand him my ticket with a big smile on my face, and she runs the ticket. And she goes, "Yeah, this one's not a winner." I was like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> She's like, "It's not a winner." I look back at the screen. I was like, "It says that's the numbers here. Here's the ticket again." She runs the tickets. And um, she's like, not a winner. Maybe she's like, maybe the race is not official yet because it takes a while for it to become official results. So I wait like five minutes till the screen comes back around. It says official results. Go back up, hand the ticket. She's says, not a winner. I was like, I bet on these three horses on Dover Downs. And she looks at the ticket and goes, you bet on Delta Downs in Louisiana? <gasps> and I was like, oh, no. no. You did some Bush League <laughs> shit there, man. <laughs> I was so butthurt. Yeah. <laughs> Matt That's... would not have made that mistake. No. He knows his horses. Oh, no. Matt knows no, his I horses. Was 
I paid my tab and left. I was so mad. I would have <laughs> yeah. been pissed. I'm like, well, I didn't mean to hit that, and you need to correct this. I would be the fool. Well, your people need to get better about naming <laughs> like, their horses. God we're not going to pay you twenty thousand dollars off of your error. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me fix this for you, sir. No. Yeah. Who named your these people, horses? Perrin. Your people. <laughs> Who named these horses. Why are they all named Stepper? <laughs> so that's my fun that's my last time I ever horse bedded uh ever did betting horses and i never have yeah, since and i won't ever again i was like nope i'm done with this <laughs> you're so hey, bitter about it you still you still won't i've still i've won't got a better. random thought slash question that'll bring us back into the chapter sure um <laughs> of all of that stuff that alan read off of what's going on the one thing that was popping in my head here is like is matt at risk here we're in a world where they know there's at least a couple of male channelers. Um, and then as word gets around about Rand's decree and there's going to be more male channelers. And then you look at Matt and they're calling it luck. Like he could just win all of this stuff. And then the decisions he makes on the battlefield, he's just kicking ass to taking names. It's like, he can't lose. At what point do the people around him or people near him point to him, accuse him of channeling? Or Do some they sort go, of a witch, right? Yeah. Well, 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 well let's let's a see. A, a, a duck floats, and uh, you know, <laughs> burn him. Burn him. <laughs> yes, yes. Burn him. Yeah. But like, I mean, that's isn't that, that is bound to happen at this point? How do they... I feel like? Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, they've said he has the dark one's own luck. I mean, mm. isn't there something about that in? Uh... Does that come up in book three? I could swear when he's leaving the city in book three, he's like, I'm winning too much. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. When he has his no. luck bin. Yeah. 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 Like this is going to be suspect. Yeah. But you got Tamanis. That's like, he's really analyzing it and trying to find a way. Like, so the conversation is he's trying to find a way where he can beat Matt. He's like, right. We got to, we got to get something where you're not using your hands and you don't have control over it. And that's why he talks about the horse racing. But like if Matt comes out and still Taverin's the shit out of it or whatever else he has going on and wins all the the horse races or horse bets like at what point do even his own people go mm, we like that you're winning because we're on your team but which which you're a witch. Yeah. Isn't, which. There, isn't there a thing built into it like he he loses just enough that it's not quite suspicious according to him well sure but like even that comes out in this conversation like yeah. one of one of the guys is like i keep losing you and he's like oh I just lost a hundred crowns to you the other day or whatever the number was. And he's like, yeah, but I'm still in the whole like 10,000 to you. Like, sure. <laughs> so maybe Which... he needs to adjust his ratio of winning to losing. I don't well, know. Well, it seems like it's related to skill, right? Like if there's a skill component rather than a pure luck component, then it get the odds get a little more even. But if yeah. there is a, if it is pure luck, like, he's shooting in the dark blindfolded then he tends to win out yeah i don't know i'm just i'm just concerned because his his close companions are really starting to analyze it or look at I it get you. Yeah. no you know, i i it's gotta raise red that's flags. a good question so the whole the whole witch and duck thing you know there's witch duck road in virginia beach oh yeah mm -hmm. i forgot Which, about that do you know the history behind it I'm I'm assuming it has to do with witches and ducks. Yeah. So back in 1706, I just looked it up. It was Grace Sherwood was suspected of being a witch, and she was trowel by water, and that's why I got the name witch duck. If she floats like a duck or sinks like a duck, she was a yeah. witch, and they I killed had her. No idea. That was yeah, I, in, I thought it was in Virginia, like, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, right down the road from where we live. <laughs> yeah, I thought I it was like if you float, you're a witch, which yeah, most like that. people do. I yeah. thought this was just and if you Python, sink, you're a you're you're fine, but you drowned. Yeah. So, oh well. It, it, well, Monty Python know, was making fun of how <laughs> ridiculous the standards were for yeah. are you a witch or not a witch. It's like yeah. if you die, you were innocent. Yeah. If you live, <laughs> you're a witch. Now we have to kill you. <laughs> there's still a road called Witch Duck Road, and it's yeah. literally named after Witch Duck Lake, which is where the witch well, was drowned. <laughs> also in Virginia, <laughs> it's still on the books in Virginia. If you can whistle underwater, you're a witch, and it's punishable by death. Oh, I didn't know. How that. do you determine bus. that? How, how I don't know, but careful whistling underwater. All right. You know, yep. I've never tried, and now I, I never will. Don't yeah. even risk it. Not in Virginia. Don't even don't risk, risk it. Heads <laughs> up. A little chirp will come out. A, in the fish. South, there's a lot of these these old laws like that that are not enforced. Like, is it South Carolina or Alabama? There's actually a law in the books that if you pull up the motorized vehicle to intersection, 
you're supposed to fire your gun out the window to not let the horses know that. Okay. Well, <laughs> but no one actually goes fires a gun out the window when they drive for cars. But uh, I, I feel I like that might. Um, yeah, they do. I feel like that may make the horses panic. Where I live in Charlotte, they fire guns out the window all the time. Oh, yeah. I know I just, why. It's if it's yeah, if it's if it's two pews, they're taking a left. If it's just one pew, they're yeah. taking a right. Uh, <laughs> they got a signal. Uh, Full no. auto, like having their hazards on. Like something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got a uh, uh, We were reading self. what again? Okay. <laughs> so, so Matt's in the end after the whole betting thing decides to go a little dancing, and Betsy, the cute girl, the cute waitress, or the, the uh, serving girl, as they call him, um, uh, he wants to dance with her. So he tries to impress her. Can't even talk, but she's hold doing on. all the talking anyway. So. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Justice for Betsy. Justice for Justice Betsy. Justice for Betsy. That's not where I was going, but can we do that next? Like, Okay, I, I you go first, okay. then I'll talk about Justice for Betsy. <laughs> okay. So I want to give a shout out to all of Matt's bros here. Like, when she comes <laughs> over, boy, clearly, I got a book to read. Clear, right. <laughs> clearly, they know that he's got his eye on her. And as he's talking about, oh, this is really my first opportunity to talk to him, they all. They can't like scurry away and leave, but even though they're there, they disappear. <laughs> they sip their wine, they look away, they they just try to blend into the background and let him do his thing. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's good bro work right there. Yeah. <laughs> let him spit his game, where, you know, crash and burn or whatever. They just let him go. Uh, uh, yeah, you told me to remind you of your rounds at this hour. And Dorian uh, coughed uh, into his fist, not glancing at Betsy, but I could come back later if you wish. Yeah. Uh, That's even after letting him do his little dance and everything, right? So they, you know, they gave him some room to to yeah. shoot a shot. Yeah. Yeah, so justice for Betsy. Let's let's hear it, Allie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As a loquacious lady. <laughs> You're using Hold words on, let me know. Look I have to look this up. We, carry on. I'll, I'll figure out what you said here. <laughs> talkative. As a talkative gal, I, 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 I live in fear that there's a man in this world that's like, you know what? She's really cute, but goddamn, she doesn't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> tends tend to talk a great deal. Or and I just, like you know, maybe she's nervous. It's a general, okay? Sounds she's like a black she's a random gal at an inn, and she's trying to impress this guy. What does she have to talk about? Nothing. She's just trying to come up with any fucking thing that she can think of to keep him entertained. Yeah, it and sounds like, like whatever's you know in her what? head. She'd just be goes a lot cuter if she shut her pie hole. Uh, That's what <laughs> <laughs> I think this was the chapter where we came up with the phrase casual matsogyny. Casual <laughs> matsogyny. <laughs> yeah. Just, just a little, just, just tiny, casual just tiny yeah. undercurrent there. It's casual yeah. matsogyny. I mean, like, but she started you know it. She was touching all she over him more. and everything. No, no, no. Let's take a step back. She all Matt did was try to introduce himself. And she right off just was like, Oh, let me ask you all the questions. And let me touch on your, your scarf and let me pull stuff away and let me touch on your skin and let me check this out. Like, okay, I'm who not a lord. Really, but I get treated like a lord. Blah, blah, blah. Who is really being manhandled here? Who's really being like. She was curious oh, I, about I, it. I, I didn't mean like that. I just meant that he was like, damn, she's pretty, but I wish she'd shut up. <laughs> I know, but we're going to ignore that part and focus on the fact <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that she started snatching his clothes off. Can the man breathe? Like, can he not be. <laughs> Can he not have his clothes snatched off? Like, listen, I'm not minute. saying that she handled this flawlessly. I'm not saying she handled this flawlessly. I think she was nervous. No, we, she was trying to make conversation. She She's was like, "What's in this scarf? Hell. It's it's 90 degrees. Why she, do you have a scarf on?" She would have done a lot like, better. Oh, you've got a scar. Want to tell the story? I don't know. I'm a random in girl, and you seem more interesting than me. So I'm going to come up with random questions to ask you. I just feel like justice for best. She <laughs> accused him of stealing. Like she did. Did she? First of all, she's like, yeah. she immediately was, catches on that he had been you. hung before, and then immediately starts talking about how it had to be his fault. I bet she. Oh. Watched so a lot one of the of worst moments hung. in Matt's life, she starts rubbing hung. his nose in it. Yeah. All right, so she's not very socially adept. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I see evidence of a very fault. tragic moment. Well, what would you do to deserve that, you son of a bitch? She's like the last guy that got hung, too. (laughs) 
I feel Thanks. like he, he's fresh off of the Melindra crap, right? Like he's fresh off of a trauma. It did just happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It did just happen. That's true. I kind of feel like he needs to give himself some time before he jumps back into the saddle. So Maybe. he's being smart though. So like he's having fun with it, but then he stops himself and he's like, all right, litmus test. I need a, there's one question here. Do you, do you know anything about daughter of the nine moons? Does that mean anything to you? And when she said, no, that's when he was like, this girl just runs her mouth too much. I just, <laughs> yeah. I'm done here. I'm gonna go check on the troops. Yeah. Was, he really, was he really done? He said probably, he, probably he, he yeah. came back. Yeah. It's, he, 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 he was done considering he was done considering more. long-term potential at that point once oh, yeah. if she was smart she'd have been like oh yeah you're looking at the daughter of the nine <laughs> baby he'd have been all about her he'd have bought all her drinks for the rest of the month I, 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 do you think he would have been all about her or do you think this is a, a litmus test in the other direction mm -hmm. I don't think this you man think has have, to get you think that's looking for his wife or you think he's like are you my wife if so I'm I'm out yeah talk to you no, in five I years I think he's trying to figure out what all of that shit means. I, I think he would explore it. I, I don't think he'd immediately like propose, but yeah, I, I think, think he's interested flee. to find out who this person is. Mm -hmm. I think he'd flee. I think he'd be like, oh, well, in that case, like if she What's was like, I can be whatever yeah. you no, want to be. I, I, he'd so be like, get me the hell out of here. Not to jump too far ahead in this chapter, but I think the end of the chapter kind of proves that wrong. Okay. Okay. I'll leave that there till we get there. We'll have to okay. revisit. Yeah. That's very will. mysterious, Chris. But, but, but <laughs> let me also He does take her out and, and dances with her, and that was kind of him. Yeah. It was nice. I he danced with her, dance. even if she wouldn't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just told his buddies to turn the music up. He's like, hey, can you get mm -hmm. that a little louder? <laughs> He's like, y'all are <laughs> horrible, but I turn it still up. still hear her. <laughs> You're kind of messing it up, but I need more cowbell. I need more of it. Oh, <laughs> oh, poor Betsy. I got a loud talking to Betsy. The only cure. More cowbell. Get more cowbell. <laughs> no real bad for Betsy. So, so yeah, so next Matt leaves and he goes to inspect the other ends uh, and find his other. And they're all scattered throughout oh, town. So you skipping over stuff. We want to at okay. least give Betsy her props. She's okay. good at dancing. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> So she she talks a man's head off and then dances with them really well, picks up on stuff mm -hmm. like Yeah. That we know a lot of women that that dance well and talk men's heads off. So yeah. Yeah. I, I thought she was the first time I read this, not gonna say if this panned out or not. I was like, why is she she seems inquisitive in a weird way? Uh-huh. I thought she was some like a dark friend or something at right. first. Right. Yeah. A little sus. She had we are fresh before. off of that having a dark Melinda, friend girlfriend yeah. mm -hmm. especially yeah. when she's going after the necklace like oh explain that to me uh, did y'all clock melindra what do you mean were yeah, y'all did y'all guess of her oh yeah i, I oh, called yeah. it way before yeah. me too yeah. okay because yeah. i was like <clears> she was a little she was just a little stuff. different yep the glory stuff bugged me because it didn't feel like yell to me right mm -hmm. yeah well, I, so i, I ran too far and i was saying that type of talk made her seem like um land fear land fear because that's kind of oh. how land was talking to them before and Rand and matt and everything but either way she was like you said one of these is not like the other the aiel seemed very consistent in how they carried themselves and she was just way off in left field so yeah 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 Total right. sus. i feel that yeah Maybe Betsy is like the female version of Pater. Uh, <laughs> like she's a dark friend, like, but not great that. at it and trying to feel her way not out. Great at can it. anyone live up to Pater though? I don't think anyone can live up it's, to Pater. Yeah. So yeah. far what we know, he's not that great. <laughs> and then we, we need to pay very close attention to the fact that not only is Rand now slipping in and out of memories and personalities, Matt, at first, it was just kind of contextual, like he just kind of knew things. Now he's starting to like live his memories, like he started this dance, and then all of a sudden, he's another person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until he caught his own reflection that he came back to himself. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Where do you think these memories yeah, are really. coming from? All of his past lives. He's getting reincarnated. But see, I think it's different than what Rand is going through in the sense that for him, there are memories filling in gaps and then elongating memories. It's, it's, a, it's infinite. 
Mm. It's kind of just being strand together. As where with Rand, he is slowly becoming the person that was. Mm-hmm. And that gets touched yeah, he's like, yeah, it's more of a battle <laughs> inside of Rand. So I was going to make that comment for you ask your question before uh, you asked the question, Allie. It seems like it's not not that Matt's embracing this, but he's not fighting it that much. And maybe it's maybe it's because the memories he's getting are pretty beneficial to him so far. I don't know, mm. but he's not fighting it as much as Rand. Uh, but then, kind of ans- to answer your question. This is something that Matt asked for, even though he didn't really know he asked for it. Mm-hmm. When yeah. he when he was in whatever with the was it snaky people or foxy people? Um, the, the folks who gave him stuff were the foxy people, mm-hmm. and the folks who told him stuff were the snaky the people. Yeah, and when the what the part where he was like, "And I want all my memories back." Well, he was thinking mm-hmm. maybe just you know the kind of recent ones, and they're like, "Oh, little do you know." With the whole turning mm-hmm. of the wheel and what you've been before, we're gonna give you all of your memories, yeah. and yeah. this is them starting to seep through. So, yeah. yeah. Which begs the question: Is uh, the wheel really that, turning, or is it one is straight I, this line? This is what I thought at the time, and I will not say if that has evolved or changed at all. Here's a. Uh, can I ask a follow up question to that? Sure. Yeah. If there is past lives. How does it work with him sometimes having like multiple memories of the same, like the same battle? Like he'll have multiple people in the same battle with different perspectives on the battle. I think he broke Ian's. Ian's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he broke no. me with that question too. And I was so pissed because I thought, like, anyway. So, so we've described this a bunch of different ways, but. Uh, I forget how it came about, but like we were looking at the wheel from the side and you just see one wheel. But then if you were to turn this way, you would see that there's almost an infinite number of wheels kind of stacked behind it. And each one of those, you could combine that with the different different turnings, man. Different Different turnings. Everything. Flicker, 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 flicker. Right. That makes sense to me. So you're like multiverse theory. Yeah. 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 Okay. So like, well, no, no, that's the previous turnings. If you if you could if you could somehow, uh, it, I mean, similar in nature, but not really. But anyways, if, if you like a CD, if, if you can find a way disc. to make connections between those <clears throat> wheels, where you can retrieve memories or have visions of, or what would be even crazier is if you could actively travel from one to the other. Which I think there's a potential for that in these books. Um, yeah, all sorts of crazy shit can happen. So yeah, you could have multiple perspectives because maybe something was slightly different in a turning where you did play a different role in a battle or whatever, but you're still kind of the same person. And yeah, he know. just did a disc defrag and all of the things kind of <laughs> yeah. back together. And, you know. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One time he's gonna go out on the battlefield and fall over, and it's gonna go. You have died in dysentery. <laughs> he's like, wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Exactly. yeah. So are we to the point now where Matt leaves? Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. So he leaves and goes and inspects the other ends because that's where his his soldiers are spread out throughout town, and there's a lot of hunters of the horn there as well. And he thinks about the the horn and people good hunting. luck finding that <laughs> good luck finding that hot hot yeah. cold cold getting colder <laughs> colder yeah um and and uh you know they're all singing the song that matt taught i'm just glad he's not they're not singing jack of the shadows because yeah he's, <laughs> he's fuck that song says fuck that. It. yeah uh, and then he thinks back to uh, a, a visit from rand <laughs> wait thinks back to or rand visits him He's reflecting on it. It's in, it's in a tower. Yeah, he's reflecting on it because yeah, we know that it. But it still happened rec- semi recently. Yeah, right? it happened yeah. a day and a yeah, half yeah. ago. Okay, that's okay. Right. We learned Rand that later. Rand needs on. to learn to knock. First <laughs> yeah. of all, what if he were with Betsy? There needs yeah. to be some kind of like, like, w- traveling like sock on the door. Yeah. Something. Some kind. Of, some kind of code. I think I think normally Rand would, and this tells you the mental state that Rand is in. So um, I'm not fully diagnosed yet, but I certainly have moments where I'm I'm overloaded with my to do list, so much so that I don't even know where to start. 
and I start to verbalize it and I'm talking it out loud oh, and yeah. I literally will just walk up uh, to Meredith or, you know, if my dad's house, she's walking in the room and I will just, what was going in my mind, I'll just turn on the voice part and just start blurting it out. Chanel and they're like, doing that today. and they're like, the fuck are you? You're like <laughs> mid thought. And I don't know where you started. And I'm like, <laughs> and I got to go back to the beginning. So like, I feel like Rand is there just, he's trying to wrap his mind around so much shit. That mm -hmm. like he can't even focus on like the basic pleasantries of knocking and all right, let's have a little <laughs> polite back and forth banter before I get into my plan. He's just yeah. yeah so the, I felt the man it a is bit. traumatized. Still rude for sure. Mm -hmm. But oh he's, yeah, I just he, mean if he doesn't want to see what he doesn't want to see. How do you know he doesn't want to see it? Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say. <he might laughs> be that. Now that Alan's up. married and everything, I don't want to walk in on anything. But like in my college days, <laughs> like, I, first of all, first time we were at a party and somebody mentioned that one of our other friends, I won't say his name, was upstairs hooking up some chick. I totally went up there, flung the door open, <laughs> said, what's up, bitches? <laughs> Lit a firework, tossed it in the room and shut the door. So like, because <laughs> it's a celebration, right? I was happy uh, for him. Uh, <laughs> it was and when the smoke alarms went off and everybody it's went outside, we were clapping. Uh -huh. Like everybody was so happy except for her. And also he was not happy. Because um, he went from being a firecracker to being not. <laughs> yeah. I might have killed the mood. I was at that uh, party. That yeah. was. <laughs> he was very from dynamite smoky. to firecracker real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so how do you know Rand doesn't want to see it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe he wants to high five his uh, buddy. He wants to throw a firework in there. Yeah. Maybe he wants to join in. Well, him and me. Him and me sure. Whole new context of baby, your firework, you know, like. Yeah. I'm completely shaken that that happened. I, I've, I need to take at least a 75 minute nap. Yeah, I just want to get back. Well, we'll still be here. Yeah, right. I need to Same figure chapter. out how I feel about that entire thing that just that you just told me. It was a good time. It's college for, years, for uh, some of us. Uh, I don't know. Of us. For yeah. you, right. it's a good time for you. I'm not saying I always made good decisions. I just made fun decisions. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. So where were where, where, where were we? So uh, to, your, to your point, busted. Rand is kind of just, but Rand is also in control. He's in charge. So there's an expectation now that's been set. Low pressure. That when he shows, you're going to listen. Period. And so, yeah, I'm going to show up whenever I want. I'm going to tell you exactly what I want done, and then I'm going to leave because everything is relevant and super important because we're at the end of the freaking world otherwise. So I think Rand's kind of moved beyond the point of caring about the small stuff in the moment because if things don't go down the way he wants it, it's going to be the end of the world anyway. So who really cares? All right, great Great comments, Chris. However, I, I got distracted because somebody I, posted Ian is apparently the brother that nobody ever really wanted. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, um, my brother would agree with you. Yes, that's, that's probably something he would read and go, yeah, that's yeah. kind of a bitch. He, uh, yeah. he would. <laughs> he, like, even when he was calling the cops on me, he was laughing because it was funny. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he had a good time. Just, you know, kind of. Yeah, you know. I went yeah. from I hate Matt to am I Matt? Very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I so I, I feel that mm -hmm. I feel uh, my sisters aren't aren't too happy about me either. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. My siblings love me. So <laughs> from from. <laughs> Because they have no choice. <laughs> Gus doesn't have any siblings to ask. Yeah, just me. Um, there you go. In some yeah. ways, that makes it easier. The golden, the golden child. Okay. Look at him. Okay. Look at him. His okay. parents care so much about him. They only have one. <laughs> we did it. Perfection. It's so weird. Because I come. I'm one of six. I go Ooh. to his house, and they ask us questions about us. Like they want to know how our day went. Like they want to know everything about us. Your and parents, like, my parents don't have that six. kind of time. <laughs> yeah. 
You certainly can't get into that with all the kids. Time. Especially now that the grandkids are there, like they yeah. could not care less about. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Gus, yeah. I'll be your bro, and I'll tell you what, Gus, you're a good dude. Oh shucks. Yeah. Yep. Shucks. And now he's gonna set a firework off in our hotel room <laughs> next. Time. So I gotta keep <laughs> yeah. our eyes open. Next Jordan Con. Next yeah. Jordan Cobb, we're going to be like, is there a firework in this room? Where's he? Yeah. Yeah. It's, Just know where your exits like, are because you can't use the elevators. In, in college, that was Ian's go-to move. I mean, we went to a party. Uh, he threw a party <laughs> at his house. And, I mean, packed, like, couldn't fit any more people on the dance floor. Like, you know, like one of those type of parties. Like, where it's like, you have to wiggle your way through the room. And you know, you know what mortars are? Like, the ones you drop in the tube and they blow up and make the yeah. big firework? Well, with no tube, he just lights a mortar and throws it in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> no one got injured. Everybody everybody cleared out the house before it actually went off because everybody yelled bomb and ran out of the house. And then you saw the windows Ian. flash. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, there's a slight exaggeration. Me out, <laughs> and it was I am a little off to the side. Okay. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> That's what that's what uh, really matters. The that's rest of it did happen. Everyone's there were fireworks all throughout back. the house. <laughs> was yeah. it cool? Uh, oh, yeah. oh, it was awesome. So after that, they encouraged me to do more firework tricks. And then that turned how, into me. So can I just ask, how yeah. many parties have you set off fireworks in? Oh. You can't count that high. No, not crazy. Maybe. We turned maybe fireworks into a drinking so. game. Like we actually turned fireworks into a drinking game. Like yeah. that's something so, that we did. So, so like this, the little ones you put the the bottle rockets. You know the bottle rockets. So well, we had the chug a beer one. Yeah, the chug a beer one. We all go to the that's beach a good one. and we all have a bottle rocket and a lighter, and you get a beer and you chug the beer and you can't leave the circle until you finish your beer. So as soon as you finish your beer, you can round the circle and light your bottle rocket fire back into the circle. And you can use so the bottle as like a as, holder as, for it. as the holder <laughs> for it. So you're trying to chug as fast as possible. As soon as the person leaves, you start chugging faster because you know fireworks are coming at it's you. It's coming. And like. <laughs> <laughs> in a matter of minutes um so it's uh it's a fun Chris drink did game. not play these games <laughs> <laughs> by the way full clarify. disclosure for anyone who listens to our podcast we do not condone these unsafe activities and we will not be held liable for any lawsuits that happen oh for yeah tries these things also <laughs> different <laughs> age and time like different this was age, pre-9-11 yeah. so <laughs> like Just the music Pre even, even if the cops showed up they go guys you can't do that wait let me let me see show Stop me how you play it. the game oh that shit's hilarious okay no 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 stop 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 because fireworks are illegal in virginia yeah yeah oh. yeah <laughs> that's true there's and also that well i, I got places. him from pennsylvania so. yeah yeah he's gonna drive to the state <laughs> I'm too. I'm too old. I'm too old to listen to this kind of shenanigans. <laughs> like, I'm I, 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 if I have a son, I will tell him: if you love me, do not tell me anything about what you do with your life. Like, don't tell me a single goddamn thing. Oh yeah, no. The best are like the holiday dinners where me and my brother actually start telling my mom all the shit we did growing up, and she uh, would, she would get like that. To let Eventually, she would just cover her ears and be like, "I don't want to hear it. You're good boys. Oh gosh, I you you're such we a good boy. that one." My, I'm like, well, Lisa, that wasn't that good. my dad, I was raised by a single dad who our refrain growing up was like, do not tell your mother about this. She will take you away from me. And so <laughs> I mean, I should laugh like that. <laughs> then I'm, 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 when I was graduated like from now. high school, my dad figured, well, she's out of the house now. And my sister's only like a year behind me. So he was kind of like, well, that's my last children with her. So yeah. He starts telling her, as a, as a fun aside, like all of the the shit we went up, got up to at her at his party, house right? at our at my graduation party, mm. and I'm watching my mom her jaw just and her dropped. knuckles start turning white, like her knuckles start turning white. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, she's about to have a heart attack right now. And she's like, Ali, can I see you in the kitchen? And I was like, no. A private conversation. <laughs> oh, no. no. And then she goes, no. I think I think I need some help in the kitchen. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to die in this kitchen. And she lit into me for like an hour. She was like, you didn't tell me anything about the time you almost got kidnapped in Europe. You didn't tell me anything about the time. Like all these things about the time that you and your sister decided to make money at your dad's party by making cocktails Skeeters, for yes. everyone when you were seven yeah. and nine. Like entrepreneurs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I, I think that's just good parenting. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's good parenting. <laughs> we, we turned out okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. At, at but our family yeah, beach I week. just don't want to know anything my children 
Yeah, our, get our up family to beach as long week. as they make it home. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've taught my nieces and nephews a, a couple of solid drinks, my go-to drinks, the way I like them. And they know when I show up to beach week, I have a stack of fives, tens, and twenties on me. Yeah. And so if I'm like, man, I could really go for another drink. Or if any one of them sees me shake my cup and it's nothing but ice, one of them will run over and grab it and be like, I got it. Which one do you want? And I'll be like, we're going to do the spicy margarita this time. They'll be like, okay. And they run off. But I hit them with a 20, you know, so they're making money. When my sister and I were seven and nine, my dad took us to this party. And he was a single, he'd been a single dad for a couple of years. And my aunt Fred decides, you know, we're standing around very bored. Uh, and my aunt Fred decides that she's going to teach us how to make um, martinis. And she's like, okay, so there's d- dry, dirty, up, like all the different ways to make it. I like it extra And dirty. so we're walking around like little waitresses asking everybody like, do you want your martini dry or up or dirty? And we're making them for them right next to like the, <laughs> just jacking yeah. off that ghost. They oh, like yeah. we're like shaking. there with the thing, right. with the shaker and doing all the stuff. And then somebody decides it's super funny to put out a jar that says Allie and Kenny, which is my sister's name, Allie and Kenny's um, college fund. And then people start getting really hammered and they start throwing in money. Yeah. And we made $300. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> they never heard of that. Yeah, Restaurants make their money off of alcohol. Why can't? 10 year olds. I mean, come on. and to this day, I think I could make a dirty martini if I really needed to. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. We'll try yeah. that in the next go around. All right. Yeah. So, so, so the, Rand, book. <laughs> the book, I, I love how Rand walks in and he's like, you said into his thoughts and it's, we need to make sure this plan goes off without a stitch. And you know, what do I do? Or how do I know if a woman's into me? Oh Yeah. I almost so totally it's forgot like, about that. It's it, like, I don't know. <laughs> schizophrenic. He's like, yeah, we need to make sure this plan goes off. And Matt's like, I know. I, I'm the one that came up with the plan with you guys. He's like, um, and how do I know if a woman's in love with me? Oh, honey, you know if you're asking I that just question. just ask her. Go up to her. Be like, Avienda, I love you. What are you saying? You, you turn me down what? Oh, yeah. In my wheel of time? What? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that would shorten this series up way too much. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Drives me nuts. Maybe yeah. a book. Well, uh, but that, that just adds to what I was saying about how he has so much shit going on. And we know he's avoiding Avienda. But it's not because he doesn't like her. He's avoiding her because he likes her. And it's just... How do we feel about a, that? So... <laughs> he needs to give her a little time a day because she's not a great communicator either. And she needs to tell him that she's pregnant, but she hasn't had the opportunity yet. Yeah. So, so is that what you think's going on? That's oh, what yeah. I know's going on. She come on. There's been, there were hints from the wise ones and one of them was about to say it and then like got cut off. And yeah. like Avienda was trying to like stop him and talk to him. And then Rand was like, close gate. <laughs> yep. You know, <laughs> Like I can see it. Come Could on. Be. I can Clearly see it. preggers. Okay. Could be. Okay. Look, that we're, be, be, we're, we're be beyond read and find out here. We know. On the first time you've ever had sex to get someone pregnant, but it's certainly not unheard it, of. It, it, it is severe. So, how I many mean. more personal stories do you want me to share? I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have four children. Do you know how many versions of birth control I have defeated? Like, I, well, I mean... I did the whole uh, just for a little bit just to see how it feels. I guess we'll name him River. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. we'll name him River. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I that was I was also a birth control baby, <laughs> so I guess I can't said. talk. <laughs> but like, I mean, my whole existence. But um, yeah, I I I don't love that he's avoiding her. I think if you have had sex with someone, you do owe it to them Probably to at least have a conversation. Well, hold on. No, let's be fair. He attempted to even marry her. He has given her the opportunity for conversation. But that was also she, an immature response. It was. An the immature whole, response. we had sex, let's get married. That's, come it, on. It was. I'll give you that. But, 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 but. He has had, uh, he has given her other opportunities to converse. And she has not given him the time of day. She just, their relationship kind of morphed into her almost playing coy. And now all of a sudden, 
he's important enough to track down and have conversations with because before she didn't want to have the time of day with him. I think the issue is is that he watched her die last book. I think his issue is he watched her die. Now that's definitely a big thing. And then she came back to life. Blessings. But his past life already has dead wife trauma. Yes. Right? And so Mm -hmm. now he's like... Robbie! Right. Sorry. And, and now, that's true. Now I he's like, I've watched her die once. I don't want to watch her die again. But let right? me push her for away and not love her. That'll make time. it easier. Let me just yeah, push her away. For, for real, it does work. I don't want to see it. It does work. I'm going to push my last one away. I was like, all right, we're done. I'm going to push her away <laughs> well, then he didn't, then so that I love. don't have to potentially watch her die. And so that maybe she'll be safe from me. I still care for her deeply. I just have nothing but to do. But I'm like, her. I think. Because you've had sex with her, you do owe her For that nine explanation. Years. <laughs> I think you owe her. I think you owe her. I don't want to watch you die again. Sure. Or it, ever. Right. It, if, if you're <sighs> mature enough to do the deed, you should be able to have the conversation to go along with it. But part of the problem is not just culturally are they way different, different. how they approach things and what yeah. different things mean. They're both still really young and immature. They don't know how to verbalize what's going on. I mean, he's it's almost like funny. they're speaking foreign languages. Like Chris, you say he tried to communicate to her, but the way he did it from her perspective and the way she was raised, some of it was offensive and some was just like totally missing the mark. So she's like, you idiot. Like, why are you acting this way? And vice versa. So like they can't, they still don't even know how to communicate on that topic with each other. Yeah. True, I agree. So with that. culturally different. I, agree with that. I mean, they can't even joke together because their jokes are completely different. <laughs> like they have nothing in common. So I don't even know. The only they thing they can do phenomenally. You know what oh, they can do? Irascible. Okay, I'm sorry. This joke is very clear. An irascible farmer. <laughs> Thank you. I love that joke. It's it's the highlight of the series. I, I love listened that to it three yeah, times Duncan and joke. read it three times, and I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I died of laughter. <laughs> I'm Love with the Aiel. I like, is it is it the water? I get it. I get the joke. It's a comedy of manners. Yeah, it's propriety. But it appears to me that the Aiel typically will do body humor as opposed to or laconic humor or laconic humor, like dry humor, as opposed to comedy of manners, which is more like French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't do the French here. Or Southern. So maybe that's why I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I do feel like it's a very small town South. It's joke. a very small town South kind of joke. So, although, although the part where it's like, but I am laid tired, then take a nap and fire the missiles. Like, that's hilarious. Then fire the missiles. Right. Yeah. That's about the only French joke I ever thought was. Unlocking a memory for me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I thought back. about that one a minute. Way, yeah. way back. Um, so yeah, so what do you think Rand's going insane from this interaction? I mean, Matt does. What, what do you think about Rand's sanity? I mean, we've talked about it a few times, but man, he's I, been. Better. I think he's fine. Sorry, guys, go Thank ahead. You. He's fine. I think it's a good sign that he's he's still fighting inside of his head, and yeah. this is evidence of like the battle that's going on and all the conflicting thoughts and him trying to reason with it. And if, you said it earlier, though. And I'm going to come back to what you said, because I'm right there with you because I do the same thing. When I'm overwhelmed with my to-do list, I I even saw a a meme on this earlier about like getting so overwhelmed that you can't do it and it only grows more. And then it's like spinning and then you start to ruminate and and, and it all comes out and then you can't figure out what you're going to do first and where to start. And And where to start gets crazy. I, I literally walked in the door on Chanel earlier and just got home. I came home for lunch. I walk in the door and I start into the conversation that we were having earlier during lunch. Like, did you try this and that and the other? She looks at me and she's like, what are you talking about? Hi to you too. Oh, what are yeah. You <laughs> yeah. Have, you, have, you, have you seen the meme where it's like, if you have a really big problem and like the therapist is like, well, try breaking the smaller pieces. Like, well, then I have a lot of small things that to worry about now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my thing is that I'm like, I don't know, as somebody who processes things, because I'm neurodivergent, right? So I process things externally. So I talk to myself a lot, right, to process things. Like I have to like verbalize what I'm thinking in my head. Like 
to me, when Rand talks to himself or like laughs at his internal monologue, like to me, it makes sense as a person. <laughs> Exactly. Because I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, I also laugh at stuff or like talk to myself all the time. I don't think this mm -hmm. is him going crazy. This is him being so overwhelmed with the importance of literally the world. So I'm not going to call yeah. this insanity. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Well, it's but, not the insanity that we're dealing with as far as his internal battle between him and Luz. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. But, right. but the other let's, let's get out of <laughs> let's get out of the fantasy world and think about any one of us if we were put under as much pressure as Rand is under. That's enough to make you go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so this I is have normal been under insanity, unbelievable amounts of stress. <laughs> Do you remember when life? we started? This and like, podcast? I start to get like a little a little like out of it you know like you're so engrossed in what's going on in your head that you don't even process what's happening externally because there's just too much yes oh, yeah. you're, you're in you're mm -hmm. inside here working it and yeah you're not and taking I'm in big, anything new i'm a big like i talk to myself i will like practice speeches with myself guys you I'll still married up. her you weren't worried oh. about all this. And he likes ah, me. Ah, ah, ah. I know, and he likes me. I told you, me. Gus is my bro, oh, yeah. and he's the man. He's awesome. But I'll tell him, like, he'll walk in, and he's like, "Are you talking to someone?" I'm like, "No, just me. I'm just trying to like think about what I want to say." That and must so make life so easy. She tells you everything she's thinking. Good God. Oh so, uh, yeah. I and it, and it's, just, it's just thing. one. It's one no simple, mentions. continuous path, right? There's no. Diverging. Definitely, definitely doesn't bounce all over the place. Definitely doesn't simple, switch. Oh switch no, topics it's not a stream. it's not a linear thought pattern. It's right. like very all over the place. But right. but eventually I will land with, with like what I've been trying to say. And I'm like, yeah. okay, here's my thesis. But that's you're going to have to think to deal with like 17 different thought patterns before I get there. So like Rand's just neurodivergent. Honestly, yeah, he's just yeah. neurodivergent. <laughs> at, le at least, at least right now in this part, he's mm -hmm. he's just he's being neurodivergent. Never is just hating for no reason. And it also yeah. makes a difference that he's walking in on Matt and dumping all of these things, right? Um, I mean, who does he have around him right now that he can have that he could just unload on? I, I don't think uh, anybody right now, not in this moment, because he's avoiding Avienda. He's avoiding Avienda. But because... even if they were hanging out and talking yeah. about sex and their babies, like I don't think the relationship's at the point, the trust is at the point I mean, he where he could just once. unload everything. Uh, I think he could. I, I, think, I think that was a two for kind of night. You know what I mean? I think he could have that closeness with her if he wanted to. <laughs> they mm -hmm. would both have to develop. But they sure. would both mm -hmm. have to get rid of a lot of their bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they would. They, and here's the thing. We're talking about like college sophomores. Yeah. And that's what I keep thinking 20, of. 21, yeah. Is their babies? Mm -hmm. They we're talking about college sophomores. That was juniors. literally the year I threw the firework in on my buddy that was <laughs> hooking up with. Right. <laughs> All he son. wants to do is throw a firework in on his buddy uh -huh. and instead he's running the world. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a big deal. We haven't yeah. made it through chapter 1 and it is 10 o'clock. <laughs> right, let's, let's move outside then. Okay. Guys on the end and then Soft a boy chapter. A boy's, get, a boy's getting beat by uh by some hunters of the horn. Got An ugly boy, smelly orphan boy. No, oh, the, the the Aladdin scene. And his name. Oh, is not God. every not every day you see a horse with two rear ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems Oliver. 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 Yeah. This might be one of the funniest interactions I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> this is Oliver, where I'm yeah. saying, like Matt the first has... meeting of Oliver. Where he's like, where where over starts talking about, oh, we buried my mom with the flowers, and he's like, okay, great, you smell bad, well, <laughs> take a bath. Oh, like, <laughs> first things first, I can't even take your tragic story seriously because like, I'm trying not to throw so up. On you you smell so yeah. bad, I don't want to hear it. I want you to take a bath. Yeah, like, <laughs> your odor you is gotta, far more so, tragic than you losing your mother. Okay, you so got to think it. about this. <laughs> I, I'm not giving Matt an excuse at all. This boy literally just said he lost his father. So for, for to to recant to go back a little bit, this boy is being choked out by a high lord because mm -hmm. he rode the he touched the Lord's horse. Yeah, and sat, Matt sat like, on it, right? Didn't sat, he on sit on it. it. He tried to sit yeah. on it. Yeah. So so Matt literally takes the cane and like smacks one dude in the balls and crushes the other one in the chin. 
because there's two lords here trying to punish a, a, a small child. A child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is where I go back to saying like Matt has a genuine heart. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And he would never cheat a person. And he always looks out for the little guys, literally the little guy in this instance. But they've become so accustomed to death at this point where the kid's like, yeah, I buried my mom by the flowers. And he's like, good job, kid. You smell, like bath. Shit. You, smell like bath. you smell like ass. He, he, he had no like polite way of saying anything more than we're going to take care of you. We're going to feed you. We're going to bathe you. We'll figure yeah. it out after that. I thought like Oliver is... he, he takes them in. I mean, he's like, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll take yeah. you until we can. Oh, yeah. Right up. I just couldn't stop laughing at the transition. Yeah. Like, between, yeah. okay, I hear you. And that's a really sad story, but you, you smell, smell like. So bad. Okay, listen, buddy, you smell like ass. You need well, to take a bath. No one's going like, to take yes, you seriously smelling like this. He did need to take a bath. This is true. Right. But and everyone Oliver's who's ever been around a like seven to 10 year old child they usually, knows that every yeah. seven to 10 year old child need a boy especially needs to take a bath no not my nephews they know better nice well <laughs> congrats because i am a former teacher and yep. we have to have a conversation at the beginning oh, of, i had, we had conversations to yeah have a conversation true. at the beginning of every year where i was like i can't smell you like this can't happen yeah like, here's deodorant Here's two because I'd have kids come up to me and brag. They'd be like, I haven't had my teeth brushed in five days. All right, that's, that that's is disgusting. Teeth so brushing needs that. to be daily. So I get but, that. I during the school year, bad. my kids will shower daily. <laughs> during the summer, <laughs> they so go now, European. Well, so I treat summer like how I did in my lifeguard years. Uh, oh, yeah. And Alan, you might be able to co sign this. There were summers while I was lifeguarding in the pool every day where I was like, chlorine washes everything off. Or I didn't shower for weeks. My Ooh, wife hates when I make that argument. When I make that argument, like, when you get a kid's bath, no, they're in the pool today. And like, I was like, no, they definitely need a bath. And I was like, not again. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that works. Now, I won't let my kids go for weeks. But if we're, so if we're in the river at my dad's house, we shower every day because river water is a little different. But if we're at the pool, Going two, three days without a shower. Like, I wait until their hair gets really stiff. Then I'm like, yeah, we need to throw some shampoo on that. Till their hair gets... <laughs> yeah. There's no flipping way. I'm it's not up. taking a shower after I've been in a pool. I itch. It's, it makes you... There's like a layer. There's a layer that you feel when you get yeah, out of Yeah, you got to get the grime off. You got to get the grime try, off. Try being so at I want sea my... for weeks with no available oh, showers. See, yeah, that's fun. Do that. Where you have yeah. layers of salt. Like, salt. Off of you. Yeah, it's yeah. literally yeah. like a cake of salt uh. on your skin. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You smell so bad. Yeah. No, really no. Bad. Uh, but Let's I see. remember when my littlest sister was tiny. Like, she was maybe six. And she hated taking baths more than anything in the world. And for some reason, that was my job. It was like, Cammy doesn't like to take baths. You got to bathe her. You and got it. one time she held on, like, buck naked <laughs> to the banister of our of our railing. And I just had her by the ankles. And she's like, in <laughs> there. And I was just like, pulling her into the bath. <laughs> Wafting her non like, This is what children are. Here. They don't know what's good for them. You just have to make them take a bath. Yeah. Well, Same with Oliver. Oliver, Oliver needs to take a bath. And like, Oliver, Oliver needs a bath. But, but I, it's just the transition between your parents are dead. That sucks. Skipping the step. Oliver was like, Bad. bro, I'm right here. Like, talk to me like a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Oliver got his conversation like a man. Yeah. Stink. And, and Matt respects it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I just think yes, and and it's you still know, funny. I get, yeah, but you're right. I, I couldn't stop laughing between the, between the. We buried my mom in the flowers. Cool, you smell bad. I just can't get over <laughs> that the guy's name is Lord Pears. Lord Pears, Lord Pears, Pears and like Lord Cullen, like a sandy pear. Like you. Now, do you pear? think they're gonna come back, Ian? Do they have any relevance, or is it Who's just that? these two the hunters, Lord, the Lord two Pears hunters. and Lord Apples, or whatever? I mean, so far there's nothing of significance, but Alan has been hinting that the world is about to blow up and we're gonna have fifty bazillion characters doing crazy ass shit. So who knows? Yeah. But I yeah. there's nothing about that that seems exciting to me. I don't know. Lord Paris seems final battle material to me. 
Yeah, he might be the one that comes back just for the final battle, and he's mentioned as the guy that gets stomped on by like a cavalry of horses. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to wait. I remember AD's him. Going to be a main character. <laughs> I mean, I think Oliver's going to stick around. He's yeah. getting invited to the in crowd. Yeah, I mean, it would be Ali who was like the first instance of meeting Oliver. So I was like, ah. There was that. Oh, there's that. The first, the first oh, instance, right. and maybe the only. <laughs> Good uh, you can't come I don't Although, know. Would you think that let's Matt's pause for going a to just leave a child orphaned alone? Sure. Matt, Matt's the hero, right? Matt's being a great guy. Well, is Matt that is... heroic behavior to leave Hold a on. child who in Matt, need behind? Matt is a general of an army that's getting ready to go on this big ass campaign. Yeah. All he and his buddies are about are fighting and kicking ass and taking names. And he brings in this child. That's a response. I'm not. I'm not trying to get too off topic here, but there are parts of the world right now where there are warlords whose whole life is fighting, and they bring in children to their camps, and they're like, "Oh, you don't have parents? Come with me. I will take care of you and train you." And we don't look very fondly on those people. Mm. So no, we're we're looking at this in a very positive light because we're like, oh, it's Matt and we love Matt. But if you look at what Matt is right now, what he's doing, and he's bringing a child into his camp, uh, it's a little dicey. Yeah. I don't know. I think he could certainly find a a more perhaps appropriate permanent home for the kid. Sure. Uh, yeah, parent, right. parental figure. That's yeah. responsibility. And Matt has been trying this whole time to avoid what? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I was gonna say every everything. Every, 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 every. So the fact that he even brings a shot in, I gotta give it to Matt. Like he's gonna be a good father. Yeah. The thing about Matt, though, I mean, what what I what I admire about him is the way he thinks and the way he acts. Is they never line up, ever. No, they he's don't. right. We talk about yeah. he's avoiding responsibility forever, and then he spends half a book five like, oh, those guys are gonna get ambushed. It's not my problem, but I will step in and rescue them. And, and I quote Ali, "Am I Matt?" <laughs> like it went from oh god i hate this kid he's he reminds me of every bad kid i've ever taught and I keep teaching <laughs> I keep going back here, like he can't here. keep his hands to himself he's just going to do cause me a problem to the point where i went oh no <laughs> oh and this is where my that theory so comes familiar. from where the emmons fielder you hate the most in the early books, is the Emmons Fielder you're the most like. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was all about parent being a blockhead. By the way, where is my freaking parents chapter? Continue. Okay. I feel yeah. it's, it's coming. We know it's, it's coming. coming. On the road. Gus, which character did you hate the most? I, I early was on? the most frustrated with Perrin. Who are you most like? Perrin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Who did I hate the most? Matt. Who do, am I the Matt. most like? Don't yeah. that's <laughs> trap. Yeah. So after after this whole interaction, that's when they uh, Matt's like, "All right, we're gonna go ahead and rally up everybody. We leave first thing in the morning." And, and both Tom Honest and everybody's like, "Dude, it's like in two hours now." And he's like, "I don't care. We're, we're we march south." And he's like, yeah. "It's uh, called delegation, my yeah. man. <laughs> you deal with that. I'm not going gonna, to sleep." That, yeah, they're they're happens. like, "We're that's... not gonna be able to sleep." And Matt's like, "I am." That's yeah, not what fun. happens. Yeah. Luck. Is it? Yeah, yeah, he looks at a boat. Yeah, he he's goes like, to a Let's boat. Let's go to that first. boat. And then they're like, oh, we can't okay, get on good, the boat. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Because that's yeah. where I was making the statement. Okay. I don't think he's avoiding the, the, the daughter, daughter, the daughter of the nine moons. nine moons at all. He's like, mm, sea folk. He's like, sea mm. folk. I doubt it. Not this far in, but I'm curious. Let me go and check this shit out. Maybe my future wife is on that. My future baby mom is up there. Like, I had not read it that way. Yeah, but yeah. I see where you're coming from. My yeah. my read on that was he was like, "Oh, a supply chain would be nice." Like that, that's to carry our stuff. But well, I get you. That makes yeah, I see that. Okay. He certainly he, wasn't running from it. No. Yeah. He was running to it. Yeah. To it. And yeah. So the sea, beautiful woman get off that boat, right? It does. They, hit, they can't get. They can't get to the boat though. So. Because um, that boat leaves, but a beautiful yeah. woman well, goes off he, that boat, and he watches. You got attack. You got a job. They didn't. You got attack. You got a job. They didn't, yeah. didn't job. <laughs> so, I think yeah. this woman that got off the boat might be Le Daughter. How do you think? Da no, daughter? she's daughter of the eight moons. He's gonna be like, so close. 
He's like, wait, one more minute. I have a theory. Yeah, <laughs> the daughter of the nine moons is. It's got to be some high up lady in the Sean Chan world. Hmm. I I think I know. I think I know who it is. Who? Haven't we met a Sean Chan person? Who? Wait, it was the chick that We've met was with Nynaeve several. and Elaine, and then it's all about Bill Doman. We've met oh, Egyanen, and we've met Suroth. I think it's Suroth. Okay. I don't remember which it was. One of them, I, I was thinking it might be it. Can I share who I think mine is? You can share. I don't Because I have Alan, no can evidence. She share who she thinks she I think it's is? two on. Who is that? You keep saying this name. The like Empress's gonna... second daughter. Okay, but where did you hear this name? Because you bring this up all the time. <laughs> but, but, but. Wait, Wait, let's give them a chance to work this out, Gus. How, Wait, how does it make because... you feel when she says this name? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I always do, because sometimes she will pick up on stuff that may or may not be relevant. And in the event that it is not relevant, I like to give her the opportunity to explain where she got there instead of they just mentioned saying, her like, once. Bunt. They mentioned her once in passing, and I made a joke about it because she's two on and she's the second daughter. So I was like, okay, well, the first one's got to be one on. It was a joke. Uh -huh. um, but that stuck in my head because I'm hilarious. And, <laughs> and the emancipated child is Freon. But, but, <laughs> but, but, what is the Empress's court called? Uh, why don't you tell me? It is called what? the Court of the Nine Moons, Gus. And so what would the Empress's daughters be called? Gus, daughters. Daughters. the nine daughters moons. of the nine moons, oh. and the only one I know the name of is Tuan, her favorite child, right? Because hey they talked about how they want her to take over, how the Empress wants her to take over, but she might have to kill her sister to do it. Hey. That was, I yeah. think it's that her, so much and she's goodness. gonna come with the return. Don't stop this her, is my crack theory. <laughs> Keep it coming, but I'm so confident. <laughs> I'm so oh, confident no, that this is going to happen. Oh, I was so mm -hmm. confident because I'm like, it all fits. It's like a puzzle. It yeah, all fits. Just... And this sure. is, I get I get crazy. <laughs> I get crazy, but I'm like, this is what's going to happen. Allie, it's like what happens when I talk to myself right. too much, but I think it's going to happen. Allie. Yeah. I appreciate all that, that because great. we have those same type of theories. So we're glad to hear it come out of somebody else's mouth. <laughs> I don't remember her, so this is a new like we need you to come back. Everyone, it was one line to bring that up. It was one it's line, one line in, uh, but I made I made a hilarious joke about it. <laughs> no, so Allie, I want you to know if you don't already know. So you sh you should feel very blessed that you have Gus that will even when he's like in his mind, where's this coming from? Encourage you to talk about it and try and you know put it together. Whereas sometimes I'll say something that is right and Alan will shut me down mid podcast and be like, Ian, no, just stop too. bringing it up. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. So then I don't bring it up. And then a book later it happens and it's true. And I've I'm like, Alan, you son of a bitch. I had it. That too. When no, have I ever he done that? Give up makes on me it. Feel, Ian, he makes me feel like an idiot. When have I like ever told he... you to not extrapolate on a theory? No, you make me extrapolate on a theory, but then you tell me why on the air, why you think it might be stupid? Not to be <laughs> that word because we're married. And but maybe I'm he lying. He will go. He will go. Like, oh, is that what you think? Well, here's like 45 holes in that, and I have to like defend my position. I'll have you know. And then half the time I'm fucking right. I'll have you know I intentionally do that with stuff that you and write so about. And so we've sometimes. called it gus lighting. Yes. And he gus lights me into thinking that I'm wrong about stuff that I'm freaking right about oh, interesting and i Gus, don't Gus and Alan must man talk that i married anymore yeah i, I uh, think this Alan podcast is maybe the worst thing that's ever happened to our marriage <laughs> but i am here for it we're all gonna know. finish this i'm watching I body do that language you guys still time. lean into each other there is there is definitely some love there she likes I it see. gus keep it going <laughs> <laughs> I was like punishment. Yes, you are. Just have a safe word and it's okay. Uh, it's the thing is coming out. Whoa. Also, Whoa. I should say, I don't hate anyone, but I there were characters early on that I was not a fan of. And I will say, I, I found that a lot of people identify a lot with the character that they're the least fan of gotcha. in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Finger. Anyway. 
So okay. then, does Matt that, does that really make me Gowan then? Yeah. <laughs> don't even who? I don't Gowan. know him. We don't know him on our podcast. <laughs> That's what Ian calls me all the time. I'm like, that's not fun. Ga- he calls you Gawain? That's yes. Yeah, well, when that's we first when we first rude. met Gawain, he was just spouting out a bunch of useless information. He was like, <laughs> Well, I've heard about Two Rivers Tobacco. And did you know the the moths that grow in the Misty Mountains and just blah blah blah? And I'm like, that's Alan. You <laughs> mention Alan, I'll be like, Alan. So I went to Freeport today and he's like, let me tell you an interesting fact about that. And it goes all Jeopardy on me. <laughs> Legitimately, at this point, someone was like, Ali, you're a lot like Gawain. I would end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan tried to, and that's why I keep saying it. I don't even know why yet. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's like, anyway, so the book. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So after the, the Sea Folk Todd, then, uh, then, then Matt announces for first light we're leaving. And that's pretty much how we end this chapter is everybody, yeah, they're leaving. They leave. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He goes back to the end. The people are dancing. Betsy tries to make another pass. He's like, no, I'm going to bed. Uh, you talk and... too much. I have a better use for your mouth. Yeah. Uh, we won't do that. All right. In my head, Canada, Betsy's just awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I really liked Betsy in the beginning. She had really great thoughts. She was very observant. She was definitely interested in a lot about Matt had he given her time and get, let her not be nervous, I think they could have had some really good conversations and one thing could have led to another and Matt could have married this girl. We can't Y'all, complain uh, about Betsy. Uh, we we complain so much about the lack of communication and how people will think something and say something else. Meanwhile, yeah. Betsy just says whatever's in her fucking head. It just- <laughs> Boom. Comes exactly. Out. This is what I see. This is what I think. What is that? Who are you? Why do they act that way? What's going on? This is I'm sweating. Blah, 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 blah. She breathed. If everybody yeah. did what Betsy did, this series would be a book and a half. Do y'all do y'all remember who Lord of Chaos is dedicated to? Betsy. Betsy. It is literally, it is literally for Betsy. I didn't know that. Yeah, is Betsy so reflect some real life person? I assume Betsy me, is a real person. I think. <laughs> Someone message Matt Hatch and get the details here. Yeah, like, who is Betsy? ask Brandon. Yeah, Who's oh Betsy? yeah, Brandon. No, be that's... Like, that's what I've been waiting for. Here's all that. <laughs> that's real for me, though. I don't know. As someone who identifies as a Betsy, um, there's just no mystery with us. Like we're gonna tell you our entire life story in an evening. Yeah. I have those. I'm not full on that way. Like my personality changes d- just depending on the mood and whatever. But yeah, I I have. I think I tend to be that way. Oh, yeah. If it's in yeah. my if it's in my mind, it comes out. I I think it makes our lives easier. For Betsy, For Betsy. I, and I I appreciate when other people oh. are like that. Some people will apologize to me. They're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for being so direct." And da 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 da. I'm like, "No no no, I need that. Like yeah. I don't want to have to guess what's going on in your head." If no. you're telling me what's happening in there, I can I can live there. That's fine. Yeah. It's no guessing. Well, it's and I like I like easy. knowing I, I really like gossip. So I really like when people tell me all their <laughs> secrets. I don't love you, Daddy. You know when you just have like a drunk night and you become best friends with some rando at the bar and they tell you everything? Mm-hmm. That's my favorite that night. Happens all the time. I that's feel fine. like that's what the wheel reads episodes with Allie and Gus are like. <laughs> we're pushing like two hours are we pushing two all right now yeah. chapter yeah. six Christmas, so, so, Christmas so any 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 uh any anything final like... thoughts? we barely covered that chapter but i think we need a pee break <laughs> and we need to move on yes all right yeah, well, final, final, wait final thoughts final thoughts final thoughts, thoughts. Final thoughts. Yeah. this chapter did not have to happen <laughs> I think right. the, the all if, we had we had this chapter for two reasons. Two reasons alone. A, we introduce Betsy just because that's who the book is written to. B, we introduce Oliver, and I think Oliver is going to play a big role in helping Matt out. Hmm. Okay. Helping or hurting? Helping. <laughs> Ooh, I think having somebody like Oliver around right now is going to mess. Him I think Oliver is going to slow him down. And make him have to really consider what he's doing with his life. And remember Matt's relationship with his sisters. And I know they're family, but like Matt's one who will who will value protecting children over so much more. 
Yeah. So I could see Matt getting put in a position of win a battle, save a hundred lives, or walk away to save Oliver. Oliver will choose to save channel. Oliver mm -hmm. or, or any small child. Like he, as much as he bounces around in what he says and what he thinks and what his actions actually are, like Matt has some pretty well defined principles of like what's important to him. Yeah, and I agree. I definitely think helping a small child, an innocent small child, trumps winning some great battle. So if those two things ever conflict, Matt's host. Mm, I bet. That's a good theory. Mm. Yeah. I like mm. that. It's okay. risky. Like this. Well, let's take a quick pee break and I need to refill my drink. Uh, and I'm going to put 10 minute counter. I, we might be back before that, but okay. okay. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do five. Bye. Sounds good. But that's all I have is a 10 minute one. Okay. So. <laughs>
All right, we're back. <laughs> Stop that early. Let me, get this, let me get this off. All right, cool. You said chicken nuggies? Ooh, Ooh. yum. Oh, insanely jealous. That's awesome. Wait, now I'm hungry. Well, we have a bunch of meat. Ten more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ten more minutes. <laughs> cook, quick cook some nuggets. Chapter. How you uh, how you how you cook nuggets so fast, man? It takes like thirty minutes for me to cook nuggets. I microwaved them. I know it's not oh. as good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just at Allie. Allie spilled I half just, of her wine on her. Shirt. I'm neurodivergent, so if you uh -oh. laugh at this, you're you're uh, anti able. You're ableist, but I just spilled a lot of wine on my shirt, and um, now it kind of looks like I'm lactating. And for that, I apologize. I'm not lactating. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sober this is really embarrassing anyway. <laughs> i'm gonna keep all my comments to myself why would you apologize for something like that women should be okay to lactate in public i was gonna mm -hmm. say you know what normalize lactating that's what mm -hmm. i'm trying to do right yeah. now this is a statement that i'm mm -hmm. making okay mm -hmm. i'm, down I'm sorry <laughs> all good let's go ahead and move right into uh, the next chapter so chapter six Threads woven of shadow. And are symbols like a snaky thing? Like with a square? That's the Simarog logo. Ooh. Gotta be. Interesting. Is it? Because we haven't had this one yet, have we? This is the first time. Yeah. It's, it's new this book. Yeah, it's new for this book. Yeah. So. And we've heard of Samurag before, but this is the first time we really start getting into the. Is someone's uh, house pretty done? I can hear it too. No, that's your alarm, dude. You didn't it's stop nine? the timer. Oh, you I didn't stop the timer. <laughs> I use those timers for the kids all the time. Oh, that's what it was. It was the timer. That's okay. funny. 
That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's like, why is this mm -hmm. thing making noise? Alan's like, yeah. hold yeah. on, pause. Somebody needs to fix their <laughs> shit. I can hear an alarm. <laughs> it's me. It's wow. me. More professional. It's wow. me. I can't work like this. Personally. It's me. It's all me. So yeah. So uh, our chapter symbol is this guy. Yeah. I think. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. It looks menacing. It, it's, it's, it it's a symbol. Quite ominous. Yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, let's get jump right in. Uh, we're with Forsaken. Um, jumping right into Samuel's point of view. Uh, it opens with Samuel entering into Grendel's uh, residence. I said the wrong name, too. I meant Grendel. Mm. Oh. I'm sorry. No. You think it's okay. Grendel's okay. symbol? Yeah. Okay, not Simrocks. That makes more sense. Could be, okay. could be both. Could, could be both. Be you got Simrock the end. Yeah. And and she finds uh finds herself standing on a on a dais like covered with gilded chairs and like naked people everywhere or at least half naked people and the most beautiful people that's performing all sorts of arts. I like so, Grendel. That's how that's how Grendel rolls. You I like, like Grendel? I do like Grendel. I like Grendel and Samrog. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I like You're glutton for Grendel punishment. Let's unpack this. Let's unpack this. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue unpack on. It. <laughs> Let's right, unpack we, all of our traumas right Grindle now. With her, her, her slight persuasive attitude, her love mm -hmm. for pretty things, mm -hmm. her pushing people the way she wants them. Like, I hope my daughter grows up to be that person when she's born. <laughs> she's and, definitely a Taurus or a Libra, if we're going oh, zodiac, okay. sign. zodiac signs. Okay. She mm -hmm. could be an early Aquarius. So the, the January Aquarius will sleep on you. They are twisted in their head. Mm. I only trust February Aquarius, the January ones. Mm, really? Yeah. I've heard that about those. early Gemini's. Yeah. Everyone always mm. says like early Gemini's are <clears throat> hard. Little, little um, I'm a Libra. Mm. I know, and I'm I have a Taurus in my chart, and I'm not a big zodiac person, but um, but I know that we like a lot of um like finer things really nice things tauruses and libras and, and there's nothing uh, wrong with collecting things i She's so i feel i sense bit. that from her i sense <laughs> that same vibe I, and I it's you're like but it's it's kinship. not about for her it's not about having the things and it's not even about showing off the things well uh, there's a little bit of showing off the things she has to other people because she does talk about how she specifically got this collection for this meeting but it's a need to be in control and it's mm -hmm. not enough to just be, to be in control of just anybody. She has to be in control of these top tier people that in their world think they're the shit, but she's able to manipulate them and twist them in her exactly. world. Exactly, And that makes her Beautiful. extra effed up. No, it's she wants heavy. She wants Having survived a, a manipulator like that, it's not beautiful. Yeah, it's been, not cool at all. No, it, that's, she wants that's the beautiful twisted. people, the the powerful people. She doesn't want just anybody. In Everybody her collection. wants. She wants to the people that in their world are convinced they could not be manipulated like that. Mm -hmm. mm, the hard the to get that, people. The people that think they're the cock of the walk. She's like, oh, you think you're something? Well. Sprinkle magic dust. Yeah. Now you're under my control. That made me think about her that she was someone she at the time. I was kind of like, is she someone that that wasn't powerful at some point in her life? Oh, yeah, definitely. And so she likes exerting that control over yeah, yeah. people who are powerful. The, the I'm sorry, I'm a fat kid, so I can say she was the fat chick. I mean, hey, you you that think right, scary. like the, there was something about her. It's some sort of trauma response. Right. Well, because I think all of the Forsaken, they come, like, you don't just go from zero to hail Satan, right? Like, you, there's something deeply broken about you. But you can want to have all this power and you can want to have uh, immortality. You could, you could choose that path without being what Grendel is being here. Oh, yeah. You don't well, need to go around and squash all the bugs and light them on fire with magnifying glass and just 
prove your dominance nonstop in a way that's really meaningless other than to show that you can do it. Right. Well, it's like Leandrin comes from nothing, right? And that's like kind of her thing. Is like sure. she comes from nothing, so like having power feels really good to her. And part of me kind of wonders about Grendel too. I get, yeah. I can't say whether or not we learn anything more about her, but at the time I was kind of like, what is this need to have people under your control who are these her, like rich and powerful people? Why is that not enough for you until pets. you have them? I think we get that in this chapter. Don't we get her Do we? Her backstory in this chapter? She, do we? Yeah, I think so. I'm checking on Encyclopedia Watt because I don't want to say anything. But regardless, yes, I think she's super interesting because it's like, sure, this is a there's thing a lot for there. her. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot yeah. there. I found it. Like, Goodness. it's interesting to me, all of the Forsaken kind of, it seems like it comes from a very deep, dark place. Yep. And like, I kind of yep. get some of it, like some of it where it's where... You know, you come from a position of no power or you come from a position of like, I really want this notoriety more than anything. Like, I kind of get, I don't want to say like, yeah. I get it, but was, there are parts yeah. of me that are like, oh, I mean. Was, was, who was the teacher? Because we've, we've heard that already. Masana. 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 And I, yeah. That one I get so much. Yeah. That one's the one I get more than anything, I think, because it's like I've been a teacher. And, <laughs> and that is a that is a job that will drive you wild. Chris I mean, can it, relate to that. It's, yes. Sorry, we're like blurry now. All of a blurry oh, yeah. okay. so that is a job where like the administration and the lack of support and the things that are being asked of teachers. And then you don't get tenure after all of that. Yeah. I get it. I get why you yeah. go hail Satan. I get it. I get a hundred percent. hundred percent on Grendel. Can I, can I read this out, Alan? Yeah, sure. If it's in, well, I, I don't said, know what I said, Alan, I heard <laughs> yes. Al and yes. I went, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, at that first meeting, da, 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 everyone knew of her, famous and honored, a dedicated ascetic, treating those with disturbed minds healing could not touch. Yeah. When she okay. accepted his initial pledges to the great lord, every trace of the abstemious benefactor was gone. As if I she thought had that deliberately... was Simarag, though. I, th I don't know. That's why. No, I that's got yeah. Confused. Oh, I got you. Yeah, On the surface was grander. her total fixation with her own pleasure, nearly obscuring a desire to pull down everyone who had a particle of power, and that in turn almost yeah. hid her own thirst for power. Grendel yeah. had always been very good at hiding things in plain sight. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. she was a therapist. Yeah, yeah, she was. Like a renowned... And she got tired of it. She's like, you know what? I'm tired of listening to your crap. I get that help. too. I <laughs> get that too. Yeah, me too. It's I like intentionally that. fucking with people. Well, no, no, no. So in her mind, she's saving them from themselves. But then also Maybe fulfilling her own need. She even makes the comment. She's like, you know, these these two people in their culture, the wife would rule for seven years and then she would die. And then he'll take another person, but he'll rule for seven years and then he'll die. And that person that he took as a wife will rule for seven years. And then that per and I but, just but she's now. not she's not doing them any favors by fucking with them unless she educates them to the reality that actually is. If she doesn't bring them the knowledge that she has, if she leaves them with their knowledge and then treats them like puppets, then she's just playing fuck fuck games. But then the question is, has it's she not benefiting anyone? Has she tried to help enough? <sighs> I guess maybe it's because I've worked in nonprofit. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Wait, has she tried to help enough that it has burned her out? And I, oh. Chris, am I wrong? Am maybe, I wrong? maybe she was the lifetime helper and that never. You work in nonprofit for long enough. It it bricks. With I have mind. to apologize to Chanel all the time. Like you got the impatient me. Like I was anybody that you meet from my past will be like, he's the most patient person. I am no longer that person. <laughs> I do no. not have the patience. It got burnt out of you. I was burnt, no. yes. 
Yeah, I I worked in nonprofits. I worked in as a teacher and it takes a lot. It takes a lot and it takes a lot out of you. Oh my God, I love that. Um, But it takes a lot and it takes a lot out of you. And there's a certain extent to which I go, because of those experiences, I get it a little bit. If you're like, I have given so much of myself to my work that there's, I don't know who I am without it. And now that it's being taken away from me to some extent, I understand also being like, well, hey, well, hey, hail Satan, (laughs) you know, because there's a certain extent to which you work in nonprofits or you work it as a teacher where you go, there is nothing of me left. And now it's just survival mode. And we're just Mm. trying our best. Like I've had to teach during some uh, appalling conditions and I've had to teach. uh, uh, There are are significant traumas to doing nonprofits and to being a teacher that I'm like, it's never talked about. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I get it. I don't, I don't condone it, but I get it. Yeah. To a certain extent. I'll keep an open mind on her backstory. I'll put that out there. But I'm as like, of, she just again, nonprofit. She's as of right now, I'm not I'm not impressed. The Uber manipulator, like literally, mm-hmm. she gets the warning from Samuel, who's like, You need to stop this. Even he see thinks there's a problem with it, but only oh. in the sense of you might get caught because you might serve the wrong person to serve the wrong person. You might send right. a brother to serve a sister, you and know. An arrow, an arrow will kill you just as fast as a shock lance. What yeah. And she's yeah. like, eh, I serve people. I, I treat them right. They will not mess with an invalid. And then she just like changes her shape. And mm-hmm. don't think I don't control them as well. That was the other yeah. point. So there yeah. is a little bit up here that's just completely wrong with her. And she no. does manipulate and control everything from the back. And she, I love her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she definitely is my favorite character of the chapter. I'm just going to put it out there. There's that's definitely scary. those people that are attracted to certain roles. Like, you know, I mean, certain certain jobs will just drive you up the wall, right? And you're like, I don't recognize She's yourself. Like, you're but there are people it, drawn to jobs where you have power over people, right? Like therapy, <laughs> like nursing, yeah. like being a teacher, where you're like, you meet these colleagues of yours and you're like, you're doing this because, not because you want to do good, but because you, you like control. having power over people. When you talk about shitty jobs, I was a telemarketer for like three weeks and I quit because it was the worst job in the oh. entire world. <laughs> well, I, and I worked. I worked for senior living facilities. Like I've worked oh, that's lots of random odd jobs. So are you it's like, there are people control. who do these jobs because uh, you have a modicum of power over people, and yeah. they will take that Allie's like and my they will first grade run class. With it. <laughs> what? I said, Allie's like my first grade class is run like a tight ship. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> they were not going to leave with anything. No, I'm just I get, uh, no, I I still get text messages like, "How did you deal with these kids?" I can't. Like, I'm taking medical leave because of these kids. How did you do it? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I had the power. Well, you go. No, you go. You go. All of them are sitting, and you are standing. <laughs> it's a visual. I'm like, you know what? They're texting me all the shitty things they're doing to y'all right now. They're giving me a great laugh. I didn't encourage, but I haven't discouraged either. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, Chris just texting back, have you tried this? <laughs> they're like, Mr. P, look at this. I'm like, you shouldn't be <laughs> doing <laughs> that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, one of those things. Yeah, when you work with kids, it's like your first two years. It is yeah. the hardest two years you've yeah. ever lived so, in your life. So but Grindle, once you're good at it, Grindle it's was like a public school it's teacher. Great. Is that what then, you're yeah, you definitely know those She's teachers where counselor. you're like, you're in this for some weird external reason. That has nothing to do with kids, has nothing to do with doing anything better. It's like you like having power over small people. And that's weird. And that's that something you might want to bring up with your therapist. That teacher that has some weird whistle or snap or clap combo where all the kids like instantly respond and then uh-huh. freeze in place. 
then yeah. there's the one kid that's still moving and she just turns and goes, Thomas, <laughs> did you hear me snap? Thomas like, yeah, but then yes, I go at the same Allie, time, uh... I've never heard voices come out of me like have come out of me when I've taught children. Like you, you're like gentle, 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 gentle. And the one day you just freaking lose it. And it's like <laughs> the the exorcist comes out of your mouth and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I've never heard I that mean, voice come out of I, my body. I, I have kids, so I know. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I like imagine it, but there's 12 of them. At the minimum, like I've had taught the whole legion speaks children. from her at one time. <laughs> How many voices was that? 30 babies. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you can only be so patient before you're like, I just, I lost my mind today. And I don't you, know. You, I lost it the because they will do process. things where you go, what happened to you? And they're like, I don't know. I felt like poking them in the ear with a pencil just you to see what would happen. Pretty See, after, and then grungy, and you your skin changes color because this is what happens with Grendel. See, when you're a lifeguard, <laughs> when you're a lifeguard, and then you're denied it, tenure. When you're a lifeguard, Ian and I Bell are both life, lifeguards at a pool. You realize why they issue whistles. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> they don't issue you whistles, and you get no support. And you then should get a whistle as a teacher. You should get a whistle. Uh, a box sporty baby comes to you and goes, "Oh, here just kidding. Are That's a plastic whistle. You need to act me thunder." Tips. They'll that you finally get the administration to come in and watch your class, and they're like, "Here's all these non-helpful tips." You'll send them to the principal's office. They'll come back with snacks. So now everybody's like, "Oh, yeah. going to the principal's office is awesome." <laughs> yeah. And the teacher is the problem, not going to the principal or not the behavior. The teacher is yeah. where the problem is. And I'm like, meanwhile, I've had kids threaten me, <laughs> like you know, and you go, "I'm 25." <laughs> you know so, it, anyway this, this so might I get seem it. like a crazy tangent but now i'm now i'm relooking at this little blip of brenda like i was judging her so hard but maybe maybe she's the good guy here yeah <laughs> maybe she I, was i told you i find so her very 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 relatable. <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> Well, S Samuel does it. He thinks it's a waste of time. <laughs> well, Samuel's about and to get his ass whipped. So up. relatable and Asmodian. I'm like, I got it. <laughs> now, yeah. so going to this, Samuel though is being having his strings pulled too, Tri doubly over, triply over. Like he's like, oh, I see her plot. She wants me to think that she's thinking about this, but she's really thinking about that. And she's like, I want you to think. Of, I'm thinking about this. I'm really thinking about that, but I'm actually thinking about this. Your I think death. I don't know if this two is chapters. Samuel's, I don't know if it's his personality, but I'm getting the vibe that he's freaking out a little bit because he knows his number is coming. Oh yeah, it's like mm -hmm. a final destination type scenario where he knows he's next. He's and like, he shit. He's I was also on the plane. I should be dying as well. I think he's starting to freak out. Yeah, I think I he thinks he, he has his next. perfect plan, but I I think he thinks he's next. He's I think this. Whole I don't know that he is next. But I think he thinks he's next. I definitely thought next. at the time that you're at, and I won't say whether or not I was right, that he was next. I also, yeah. well, I don't think the male leading, forsaken up to that. are particularly. Well, I mean, let's let's yeah, like that's the whole plan that Rand keeps talking about, but not talking about. Probably but, revolves around him. But yeah. but 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 there was one mention not that long ago about some smoke and mirrors thing. And it was. So I don't know if the smoke and mirrors is you fake the big army and then Rand zips in and takes out Samuel himself, or Rand might have a completely different plan and the smoke and mirrors is to distract everything. We we don't know that yet. We talked about that a, an episode or two ago, the whole smoke and mirrors thing. Anyways, but everything seems no. to point at Samuel. Yeah, I mean, I think... Oh, by the way, the children had nothing to do with why I would join the dark side. It's the administration. But... Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's admin always, but, um, my, my feeling <laughs> at the time was that Samael was next. And that's why, like, yeah, like you said, like he's panicking. For um, sure. I'm curious, do you have any thoughts about kind of going back to the prologue, the, the new mirror draw friend and the um, her on. Sh yeah, Shida her on who we call Shida hard on. 
Um, <laughs> that's how I remember him. <laughs> Shout out hard on and the two the new friends, the 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 uh, what Aaron Gar and Aaron Gar the Gars and Osan Gar. Yeah, do you have any thoughts about those two? And I'm sorry for retreading territory that's already been tread a bunch. Oh, sure. Still developing. What's what stuck out to me more than that was when was it D D Mondred? Mm -hmm. Is that where that's his name? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He what? makes note of how like the entrance is much larger than it needs to be for what he's seen. And that's not something like the Great Lord of the Dark would do. So that made me think that there's something bigger and better coming and going that we haven't met yet. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm what? sure it's a thing. I just don't know in what way Ooh. these things will play out yet. Still yeah. kind of waiting. Yeah. I just I had a theory at the time, and I was curious what your theory was. Yeah. Um cool, cool. So you do you, do you think it's uh I mean, so kind of moving through this, um, obviously they talk about the pets and everything like that. Talk about um uh Shara mentioned a new place. Uh and we get is more it, into it. Is it new? Has Shara been mentioned anywhere else? I think Shar has been mentioned one not, time. Yeah, okay. Let me control F. But yeah. not a lot. Uh, yeah, okay. So in the previous books, it has been mentioned. You're right. So they yeah. talked about the land beyond the waste. Yeah, they didn't really right. say it by yeah. name. Because they, they sell uh, wetlanders. Well, yeah. not yeah. Kyrian in there. Because merchants can travel to the waste to get there to do yeah. trips. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. they sell Kyrian in there if they wow. see them yeah. in the waste. It's actually, yeah. wow. I'm surprised. I just control F the audit, the uh, ebook. It comes up in Great Hunt. It's okay. mentioned in Shadow Rising okay. about four, five times. I think the only heaven. reason why I remember it so much is I got obsessed with Shara for a minute. Wow, it's mentioned like fifteen. Wow, I got obsessed with Shara for a minute <laughs> well, because I was like, "Well, we're gonna go there eventually." Yeah, we well, we talked about probably a book ago how the world clearly has to expand beyond what we know now well, yeah and, and I mean, because the they mention it i knew we were going that way the misty mountain hop or mountains of mist or bum, bum, whatever they are bum, bum, we know there's some bum, shit going on bum, there we just haven't been bum, there yet bum, bum. yeah the sea folk <laughs> islands i think will go and sure. i think shara with the forbidden city yeah. i mean that was really yeah. interesting yeah. to me I think they're going to go in to the steading and talk and now we know a little bit more about that and then of course the sean chan yeah, yeah exactly. the other side of the world but i i thought they were really interesting particularly because they had a city you're not allowed to go in and i went well then we have to go yeah and yeah. they're breeding male and female i said dying yeah well yeah they took that whole eugenics theory and really ran with it right mm -hmm. i mean because they because somebody said oh yeah i mean eventually we should probably start Let's let's yeah, that, that was in die. that was in the Great Hunt. How it talked about how the Aes Sedai population is thinning a whole lot, and one of the theories was is because they've been killing all the male channelers. Is breed they're they're breeding out the ability. They're to breeding out the male channelers. Yeah. Oh, I sure do have a theory about Shara, but I don't think I should share it right now. Yeah. You have to listen to our podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feel free. Yeah. Plug. There you go. But, um, um, I I thought that eventually, you know, we we should go there if it's forbidden. Mostly because I there isn't a forbidden thing that I don't want to look at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Giggity. Well, let me tell you about this some links. Again, I'm not. <laughs> You're on the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we've dropped our Patreon accounts and we have an OnlyFans. Alan will send you a link. <laughs> we take PayPal, Venmo. Gotcha. See, but you know, take it you it's not forbidden. Today. It's allowed. So, like, I can't look at your OnlyFans. Oh, it's forbidden. <laughs> well, well, no, you've got a new sign up right now, just now. <laughs> If you say the words forbidden, I'm like, I'm there. We are Whatever. illegal in 14 states. It's amazing. <laughs> so Samael is trying to kind of come to terms with Rand. He mm -hmm. can't really accept the fact that Luce there and may or may not still be around. He's like, I outlived him. He's gone. Rand's just a bumbling fool that just so happens to have luck on his side. Yeah. And, 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 and Grindel's like, of him, why don't you kill him yourself, Grendel? And Grendel's like, 
the Dark Lord has greater plans. And then Samuel's like, is he going to make him nameless? Yeah. So, what do you think, yeah. do you think about the word nameless? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I I literally have been thinking from the get go that Rand's going to convert at some point. Yeah, mm, go to the dark side. Go to the dark. Yeah, side. you you've thrown that around. And Anakin Skywalker style. Darth Rand. Yeah. Darth Rand. Darth Rand. So, but he know, go he goes dark and then he comes back. Yeah. So there goes that theory. Okay. Or does so, it does that mean we it goes that theory, or does that mean the theory just gets expanded? So so Star Wars Raven uh rad. Uh <laughs> got deep cuts into Star Wars lore. <laughs> well, because I don't think I mean if Rand does go bad, which I think is totally a possibility, I don't think he'll stay bad. No, he's got too many children to take care of. My thing is I think he'll he's got die. twins coming. Yeah, I he, think he's definitely gonna die. Does he have twins yeah, coming? You haven't that mentioned that yet. I think he has twins coming. coming. They think yeah, Avian is pregnant with twins. Yeah. Is that the wife they think will get pregnant? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's gonna get all of them pregnant. He just oh, yeah. Started, yeah. I mean, this is. We've only just begun. Yeah, he's a stud. <laughs> to he has to have like seven kids by the end of this book. <laughs> I, uh, I think he gets NFL one BS. pregnant, but I have. Oh my god! Yeah. That's what I watched. Three. Sweet Pray and Obey recently on Netflix. And it's on a, Netflix. It's quite a documentary, and it's like all about the plural wives. And we're like, oh my god! But yeah, major trigger warnings, massive trigger warnings. But mm. um, I think I think he will definitely get someone pregnant. I don't know. I what do you think. think it's Avienda again, or just Avienda? <laughs> I don't know if it's totally for me, but he's gonna get Elaine very good at for sure. No, but Elaine's the one who you would think she was Elaine, pregnant. Elaine's the one who wants to plan it out. Like this is when we'll get pregnant, and these this is what we'll name our children. And then Rance will be like, "That's what I think. I've I think it's." I know he's gonna get Elaine pregnant because that's the way he's getting power. Uh, yeah, I didn't. think it's Elaine. Elaine's gonna be like, "We need to have a baby for the empire." No, it's not. For the <laughs> yeah, we need empire. an empire <laughs> baby. Her. We need to have a baby for the empire. Yeah, because she's gonna be in charge no, of Kyrian she. and Camelin, yeah. and they're gonna need to have a baby for the empire. Yeah. She's gonna stay in hiding forever. Where versus Avienda, but, I, I think, think th she's smart enough to down that T at the first opportunity. Oh yeah, the birth, the birth seven, control team. seven kids. That's how he goes to the dark side. He has too many kids. <laughs> and, and all seven no, I know that they're all in diapers at the same time with with opposite sleep schedules. <laughs> with opposite sleep schedules. Oh, the dark side fast. <laughs> I know that's right. Alan but had all I, of his hair, I and it, it was in full color when we started this. Yeah, so maybe uh, then, but I don't see Avienda getting pregnant. I don't know. I feel like she she down that. She's not so gonna fast. get pregnant. She already is. You think? She's oh no, the, wise, the wise one stopped her from downing that tea. This is part of their plan. Mm -hmm. They need a deeper hold on Rand. One and two. They need a deeper hold on the other Aiel. And the best way of doing that is by bringing a child into the fold. Sir Francis Bacon. That what? was his. That was his. That was his theory. <laughs> I could see it. I mean, I could. You, you see don't try it. and be diplomatic, and you don't try and no, sign. You treaties. impregnate them all. You breed with. Yeah. I could see it. I mean, I could see it. I won't. You know, what, I why do you think there's so many mixed people in this world? We're we're trying to. We have a plan. <laughs> There's an agenda. There's an agenda. There's an agenda here. <laughs> I we just know don't feel like the best plan at the apocalypse is like breed as much as possible. Oh, no, it's not breed as much. It's, it's I'm the, working on it. Yeah. I've got four, and <laughs> Meredith has two, so we're at six, and we're not necessarily done. There you go. And there you go. We've got so, zero. And Ian, I've, got I've, got a, I've got a couple you can borrow. Ian, Ian's yeah. open, so you I want one? They're all going to be with different types of people, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to be integrated. Like, we're, we're, like this, you have to do it. That's how you make the world a better place. Yeah, I so, have a question. That's very okay. wise. What's your question? Is Samuel is he afraid of Rand, or is he afraid of Luz? Losing. I yeah. yeah. That see, that's a. 
That's I think what that's what I think is gonna bite him in the butt. I well, think I think the well, Rand is gonna be ironic. what gets him. Yep. But he's mm-hmm. freaking out about the lose. But yep. Rand is trying to suppress the lose. And the Rand is what Samuel doesn't he's know. He's planning for lose, and that's he's why he lose. it's going to be a direct attack. Yep. He thinks that he's going to have time to fight this, and he's going to be allowed to fight it, and he's going to get Rand and Matt's sneaking manipulative plan, and he's yep. going to be killed because of it. That's the part he's he he doesn't see coming, and he doesn't respect. He doesn't even care yeah. to worry about He's freaking out about Luke. David and Goliath. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. So after after talking so about when Rand, he has is cheaper by the dozen. Uh, <laughs> after talking about Rand briefly, they go into where the where trying to figure out where Asmodia and Lanfear and Mogedian are. <gasps> That's the question. Yeah. Of wait, wait, the wait. hour. Let me ask you where then. in the world is <laughs> all of them. All who killed him? <laughs> who killed this Modian? Who killed him? Who do you think? What did I say last time, Alan? I had a theory. You did have a good theory too. Do you want me to remind you, or you want to just no remind me if you if you uh, remember? I remember. I just don't want to tell you. Oh no, say it. What did I say? <laughs> you said Grandal. Yeah. Oh yeah. Grandal. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. It was tell definitely somebody everything. he knew and recognized. Because That's wasn't freaking sad. Because. Leading up to the showdown, it wasn't just that Ravine was there. There was supposed to be some planned, coordinated attack, but then Ravine, he ended up being on his own. But the other Forsaken knew that he was there, so there was certainly the opportunity for... And we know that Grindel has stepped in in other places now. And then afterwards, there was some Aes Sedai that was like, oh my gosh, I have to leave because I'm freaking out. And that could have been Grendel in disguise. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, what I had to leave. There was, but, there but, was but, some but, comment so, about so, Ice Sedai being but, there but if, then if, dipping out. If Gridle did it, why is she wondering where Asmodian is then? No, 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 no. Pause. Yeah, she's not. Pause. Allie has a whole thing. Pause. Okay. Because it. I have a whole thing. I think Grendel did it. And I have a whole thing as to what can I can I share? Yeah, Alan, go for it. Can she share? Yep. Yep. Can I sure. Share? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I think I think he is hundred percent because Bam. I suspect Grendel. A big reason why is because of the way that he acted when he died, which yeah. is you know, which right. he would only do that for somebody he was afraid of. So like that rules said, out yeah. a Yenda. That rules out rules out a Gwen, Moraine, like any of those yeah. people. Because he wouldn't know to be afraid of them. That pretty much narrows it down to the Forsaken. Right? To me. Agreed. To me. That's what I've been thinking. Yep. Right. To me, that narrows it down to the Forsaken. I watch a lot of true crime. So (laughs) here. So I have a big. He knew the killer. He he knew the killer. And he knew to be afraid of her, her. And the reason why I think it's a her. Right before he died. He shivered. Why would he shiver? We have been set up to know chills. that men channel get chills when there's female plastic. channelers about. <laughs> Am I wrong, Gus? You're not wrong. You're not Everything I'm she not says wrong. is right, Gus. But it's got to be a woman. So that narrows down the Forsaken to just female Forsaken. Magadian's got an alibi yeah, so because she's enslaved. Yep. So, you th- so Ian, you think she finger blasted him? No. I totally do. No, Land not fear. finger blasted. Yeah. Got finger oh. blasted. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that would show up. Very nice. <laughs> watch my a- watch your ask us. Apparently, mm. okay. That okay. So I I narrowed it down from. She's been on Land horses, bro. Watch your butt because she's probably <laughs> maybe dead, but I don't think she's dead. That's my thing. Yeah, I don't think she's Land dead. I don't think she's dead. Oh no, I don't think so either. No, or or it's Marine. too easy. There's no body. Yeah. They went um, somewhere. Do you think I mean, Maureen is dead? No. No. Oh, gosh, me neither. No. Not she, a, no. There's no body. Everybody okay. was like, are you so sad? I'm like, why would I be sad? Why would I be sad? But Maureen's dead. Back. I'm like, fool. No, she's not. She's coming <laughs> yeah. in on a unicorn with Tom <laughs> later she's on. She's coming on a unicorn with Tom. Okay. But those <laughs> two are out of the picture. Right. So that narrows it down to Masana, Grendel, 
and Semarag. Now, Semarag was an interesting Osana, candidate because Asmodian the was afraid of her. <laughs> but we've been in Masana's head and Semarag's head, and both of them claim they don't know. And as of this chapter, we've been in Semarag's head as well. Both yeah. of them claim they don't know what happened to Asmodian. Why would they lie in their own head? Grendel, uh, meanwhile, I know somebody that does in that. her own head. Mm -hmm. But so, so who sent the midril and the trollic to the stone of tear? Who sent well, we, the midril? We think, and the we think Landfear. We think and, no, no, no. and Samuel, and no. Samuel thinks Landfear. You? No, well, you get an answer to that at some yes. point. Yes, but That's not from the person who I, did it. Only people. No, you him. got it from the. Person I can't. Who did I can't it. speculate on that because well, I know on, the me, answer. I'm just gonna look that it up. She had. Her that oh, no, you're he right. had her you're send right. Midril and Trollic to the Stone of Tear to battle those sent by Samuel. That was Simurag. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. Know, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Simurag, you know the answer to that. Simurag is the one killing all these people behind the scenes, as she's told by the Dark One, because he's trying to eliminate all these additional players that are not following him the way he wants. But why would she lie? And that's why he head. knows how they're dead. Simarag. Why would she lie in her own head? She's like, I don't know what's wrong with what's going on with him. Why would she say that in her own head? What's going on with who? In her POV, she goes. Uh, let me, let me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in uh, in her POV in this chapter, she skulked out of sight, but she had never gone so long before without making herself known, just to remind them. The re is this? Who is this? Is this Masana? No, that's that's still the conversation between Samuel and Grendel. And Grendel, you're, they're, you're talking, they're talking about Magedian. They're talking about Magedian. No, Magedian this is Semarag. It's oh, Semarag. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. She skulked out of sight, yada, 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 yada. Uh, Asmodian, a traitor, and so doomed, but he really had vanished. Vanished. And then she thinks, if the great lord moved, moved her here secretly, might he not be moving Magedian or Lanfear or even Asmodian? Yes. Mm. So she thinks Why he's would she lie in her own head? In her own head. So that's my theory. This is my theory. So, and Masana yeah, in the right. prologue thought something similar, but Grendel, we got in her head, never thought anything similar to that. And I don't know. Again, I don't know, but I think Grendel I got did it. Mixed up. I think you're right. I like it. I like I this like part. this theory. I think Grendel did it, and I'm going to die on this hill. <laughs> the only hole that I can poke into it is. Okay. I have discovered in the little bit of therapy that I've gone to that there are people who, instead of taking a collection of facts as they see them, perceive them, and then forming a conclusion, there are people in this world that start with the conclusion that they want, and then they fabricate a reality That's that true. gets them to that. Are you suggesting... That I'm so, thinking that way around Grendel. No, I'm so one of your questions was why would she question that in her own head? Why would she say that in her own head? There are there are people that want a certain outcome and will tell themselves lies and then they'll refine the lie to the point where it eventually makes sense, and then they're you know, they try to sell it to people. True. So That's it's possible to lie to yourself. People it do is that. possible to lie to yourself. Yeah. I think that at the same time, it's a time, stretch. It seems like there are pockets of Forsaken that are working together, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Grendel and Lanfear, Samael, and Robin were all kind of working together, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Grendel even makes that point just in this next scene where they're saying, like, how strong does Luce there need to get before you realize that we all have to work together? Like, and, and Samuel's kind of, like, brush it off, saying, like, uh, Rance is an ignorant boy, doesn't know what he's doing. And like he's like, he's picked us all on one. Like, we have to work together. You're like, we're all yeah. you're next. You one are next. on one. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's gonna do this one on one. And in yeah. all the turnings, it doesn't seem like anybody's really done it one on one. It's been a combination of right shit that brings them down. So but it seems like Damon Tread is working with Masana and Semarog, and then the other four who are alive or were alive, Lanfear, Damon Dread. Or Lanfear, Samael, Robin, and Grendel were all working together. Yep. But those four were the ones who knew that Asmodian had kind of flipped. And yeah. so you'd think that those would be the four with the vested interest of getting rid of him. Correct. Right? Versus the other three. Yep. Granted, he was afraid of those other three. Mm -hmm. But 
I think that it was the other four that would probably have an interest in getting rid of him. Lanfear has an alibi. We eliminated the two men as a suspect. Grendel is the the fourth. His reaction wasn't fear either. It It was 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 just no. Uh, Yeah, it was like, oh, damn. Well, I didn't read it as surprise. I read it as you know. Well, yeah. But that that could apply to Lanfear. Because remember, in his mind, he's thinking Lan- Lanfear is gone, gone. But I think she's tied up. Yeah, she. I, I agree with I you. I don't disagree. I, I'm just trying to poke No, away. I know. But like, I've thought about this a lot. <laughs> it's good. Trust me, I, I'm on board I've with you. sleepless nights. This is, <laughs> this is me sleepless. Like, I've aged because of this series. I truly have. Um, and I like wake him up in the middle of the night. Where I'm like, oh my god! I was thinking about Grendel. I was thinking about Grendel. It's two in the morning. And it's two in the morning. Uh, But I'm like, I gotta talk about it because I think that we should record those for bonus episodes. (laughs) (laughs) Because I think that audio only. If it, and I'm so sorry. I don't mean to to like, but do it. Take over, hijack, baby. (laughs) But I, I truly, I've thought about this a lot. I'm like, I, I just, I think that Lanfear is in the world of the thing. And she's hanging out there, not in a good way. I think something bad is happening to her and Moraine. But I, I need to, <laughs> I need to see <laughs> Allie's murder board. <laughs> that I assume she has the word. Mm. I feel like. Have you ever seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh where yeah. Where Charlie's trying to figure out who Pepe Sylvia is. Yes. That's how I feel about who killed Asmodian. <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm like, it's Pepe Sylvia all the way up. Huh. But I'm like I've got like red thread going from one person to another person. But I just I keep coming back to her. I think it's Grendel. And I also I Semarog, like it. if it were Semarog, I add that would have taken book, her Alan. time. Yeah. From everything we know about her, he would she would have tortured the shit out of him. Yeah, I feel that. So it's not that the Forsaken that sits there knitting and just kind of hanging out. That's the one you got to worry about. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's extra creepy. You know who, you know who we've been forgetting though? Pat who? Bain. He did it. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 I don't. Okay. Someone tried to say this to me the other day, and I went no because ran because Asmodian shivered before he died. Who do we know shivers? Men who sent women channeling. It's been from the get. From the get. Shivers. The shivers. I keep she shivered his shivers. timber. I keep coming mm-hmm. back to the shivers. These are uh, my crack theories, and I will have them. No, well, you can keep I it because like I think you're doing a good job. This is gonna, me. There it is. We're gonna add that to our book, uh, to our to, to Alan's little book of. This I is like me. It. You this have you me. have better facts and and, yeah, and whatnot. Well, don't go I'll calm down. Your I theory. promise. But this is my one thing. This and my theorem, but I won't talk about that here. And, Can we just fast forward to whatever book and chapter reveals who killed Asmodian? <laughs> because I think we need to know right now. We need to re- I think reveal we need to know it right, right now. now. <laughs> Let me tell you, if I'm right, if I'm right, y'all don't want to talk to me because I will be insufferable. <laughs> and when it's Pad and Fane, I'm going to be like, hey, Look, that, was, hey, that was Chris when the unicorn showed up. Let me yep. tell you. Oh, oh, I, I waited too, boy. I ain't say nothing. I didn't see my any message. I was like, "There's my unicorn." You were quiet oh, yeah. most of that podcast I until, I it, until I it waited. showed up. I was like, you were like, "Hold up, yeah. Alan. We need to go back a little bit because you skipped <laughs> <laughs> the best part." <laughs> Alan was I like, feel that. Damn. "I feel yeah. that so hard when you're right about something in these books." And everyone made you feel like crap. <laughs> so what do you think we're going to get out of this Aes Sedai that's so important to the Dark One? Mm. I can't say. Dang, that means it's coming a, soon. That oh. means we're going to this book. I like it. Oh. Are we skipping to Cabriana? We're skipping to this? Yeah. Well, we we, we still we, we still haven't split uh, the guy in half when when uh, Samuel leaves. You got a slice. <laughs> I mean, that was okay. We knew we knew it was a thing. Yeah, we knew, we knew it happened. could happen. Yeah. With who? When, when Samuel, Samuel split, left split, and, and splits he, the guy in half. 
Okay, nice. wait, I have one question because the other two, po- the other podcasts and I who are first time readers apparently disagree on this. Who won that ex- exchange? Who was manipulating whom? Grendel or Samael? Mm. Oh, Grendel, 100%. Gre- Grendel, because she, she stayed. Person. She kept her shit together. Samuel was was very much flustered. You could tell. He was shook. He showed up shook, and he left shook. That's what I said. I was like, I think Grendel had the upper hand in that conversation. I think she knew how to play him like a book. Because it was yeah. Grendel and manipulating And she got more out of him Samuel. than he got out of her. It was him manipulating her. See, her manipulating him for him to manipulate her for her to then turn around and manipulate him. Wait, not to get that him we to think is wrong. he was manipulating her. Not that we weaves is wrong. Um, they're amazing. I just we apparently disagreed, and I wanted a tiebreaker. Well, you got it. She's this is why she. When I said from the get go, she has my favorite. It was between her and Simarag because I love the way Simarag handled torture. Mm. I yeah. mean. Like, there's something I, kind of weirdly hot about it. Am it I, was no. so, it, and, and so it, what made it worse is when she started using pleasure. I'm like, <gasps> I know. I see it's like Simrog now. <laughs> yeah, like wait, yeah, yeah, Gus, we're there. Can we, Gus, can we see your wrist? There. <laughs> are there any? Are there any bruises? <laughs> you see, wear long it, sleeves. In hasn't the been of tied summer. up lately. <laughs> it's, a it's a weightlifting bruise. So. Oh, that's what. Oh, this, yeah, that's I felt up some stairs. Yeah, he's I, like I, jokes I on you. That's not where she ties me up. Uh, he's <laughs> fine. He is fine. But like you know, I. T- but uh, he's not saying anything. She is though. <laughs> he's fine. I he's fine. Great. It was a common accident in the shower. Okay, these things happen. <laughs> I just slipped. <laughs> was, I I didn't rinse all the conditioner, and he stepped that? on it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When she kills him with pleasure, it's a little hot. No? Okay, I'm just gonna keep drinking. And she's like, women love a little pain. We're just going just just a little bit. Keep pushing, keep pushing. I'm not gonna comment on that. And, but. She, and, she looks up, and she looks up and she's like, oh fuck, I killed him. Like and it's a little yeah, hot. Yeah. <laughs> they do that, like, I took it a little too far. <laughs> little yeah. I don't know. fuck it, whatever. What? Let's go find another one. How many times has it just been like, you like that, don't you? You really like that. Uh-huh. There you go. There. It's like, shit. I didn't mean to take it that far. Okay. <laughs> well, we're here. We're here now. It's like it happened four times. <laughs> so there is a fine, there's a fine line. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. What, Alan, what else you got for us? <laughs> Please continue the story because... Simarog, like it was between Simarog and Grendel, and, and they're both my favorite characters, and for all the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're we're there talking about Simarog's torture. I mean, so Simarog gets off on the torture stuff. I mean, that's that's what she's she's the torturer, um, and and yeah, she used to be um, a healer too, right? Yeah, she used to be a healer. Be called in to heal delicious IPA. Anyway, my she's been called. She used to be called in to heal, and then she turned and she flipped and went the opposite direction too. Because she's like, you know what? They got upset because I took a little bit of pleasure out of a little bit of pain during my healing. But I did for people. So this is what I think. By the way, I think she's the one that's found a way to reconnect people. Hmm. Reconnect as in they've been gentled or yeah, huh. So I think she's the one that's most like uh, Nynaeve. Ooh. And I think somewhere there's going to be like a connection. Between Sarag and Nynaeve? Mm-hmm. Because they're both healers? Okay. No, I think because the showdown between the two of them would be really interesting. I think mm-hmm. that more or less because, not just because they're healers, but because I think that Nynaeve is going to get to that point. It's anger that 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 lets her use her power. It's and but or it's the curiosity with reconnecting. 
And then she's going to find somebody that could teach her stuff well beyond anything she could learn anywhere else. I think that's going to entice her so much because she's going to be like, if I take the bad, I can do so much good with it. Mm, That's dangerous. Well, it's that whole... I'm going to I'm going to figure out how to put this. And she's there the have only been plenty that... of things medically over the years that have been accomplished because of very bad medical practices. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. No, nope, you're and not it's wrong. that question of like and I need Do the help. ends justify the means? The answer is usually no. No. Right. But do we learn a lot in the process? Yeah. Yes. And Nynaeve has no level of importance yet. Like we're looking for that one to kind of flip. And she's really the only one that hasn't been given a an important role. We we have the theory, I have the theory that she might become the uh Amerlin. The next Amerlin, but no. the other thought is she goes to the dark side. Mm. <clears throat> Darth Nine Eve. Yeah. I, I think- I had a theory as to who would be Amarlin at this time. I won't say whether or not I'm right. I was thinking Elaine or Egwene. It's going to be Egwene. Right, right now, it feels more Elaine. But I, I think I want Egwene. I don't see Nynaeve in the you think Elaine and you think Nynaeve? I think Egwene, for sure. I, will, I, like, I, I can't say whether or not I've even gotten that. But I have... I have my own theories. I don't get vibes theory. from Nynaeve. She's too much. So tell us about your theories, Ali. I don't have to go that far. Do they, <laughs> do they come <laughs> through this book? Time, We're going to get our next Amberlynn in this book. <laughs> Take one more sip of your drink and then say it with your chest. So this is interesting. <laughs> at the time that I'm at with you, I thought of Gwen. Yeah. So you think Nynaeve, you think Elaine, and I thought of Gwen. Yeah. No, I said Egwene. He thinks Egwene. Egwene. You think Egwene. Egwene. Yeah. Well, so yeah. we both think Egwene eventually because of her previous flicker moment. trip, flicker moment, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 We I don't know her, if this is this has, reality or is it way in the future or like, what do we, I don't know. Right. Like I thought right her accepted test and some, some of the dream stuff was yeah. weird. Yeah. So. But I, I also, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, uh, but that's what I thought liar. at the time. You know, you stop talking a lot when you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. I don't know. I know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, like, I, I legitimately at the time. You realize that you... But she might have, think... may, and maybe it might not, it, I wouldn't say a full on lie. She may not know, no. I don't know. But she I'm knows. certain she has more evidence than we currently have. Yeah. <laughs> And so when she can't <laughs> yeah. talk, she Shoulder <laughs> <shrug. laughs> You'll Real have fun. to Raffo. I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. At the time, I thought Egwene. Maybe I don't think that anymore. Is what I'll ooh, say. Ooh. Mm. I, I think Elaine. I don't think Elaine makes it back to Camelin. I think she gets pulled into White Tower politics. Well, mm. the exiled diaspora. That's a White really Tower 2.0. Thing. She'd be well equipped for it. That's she, a really exactly. interesting thing. She's been raised her whole life to do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like she can play the role. And remember how the new But Nynaeve's the most powerful. Yeah, that but the, might factor but in as well. When they were talking about this new group of Aes Sedai that have branched off, when they were talking about who they wanted in there, it might have been Swan who was pushing it. But one of them was talking about how they need somebody young and somebody they can control, but mm. somebody also that has that air of power. It should be someone very strong with, I was about to say with the force, <laughs> but a strong channeler. I mean, it's the same thing. And Right. And Elaine fits all of that. Like she's very powerful. She's done many great things. Like her ability to make the, is she making an Angriol, Tarangriol? Which one, which one is this she making? Tarangriol. Right. Yeah. Right. So she's doing these amazing things, but again, how she was raised, all that jazz. And, but she's still young enough. She could be controlled. Like she fits the bill of what they're looking for. Yeah. I guess my question is, how do you think an Amarlin gets raised? Um, Like what are the factors that they would consider? I mean, if if there are any, I'm assuming they teach him good manners. 
Um, <laughs> have you met Swan? You know, how to share. Um, <laughs> you know, knock before you open a door. You know, that's a good way to raise anybody, <laughs> really. Just common decency. Your basic courtesies. There's, I, I'm, I'm thinking there's a vote. Yeah. A vote? Sure. Yeah. Well, with everything else, there's a test, though. That's true. I mean, even even to be like, uh, wait, what's entry level at the White Tower? Novice. But novice. Novice. You still have to be tested to see if you can channel. And then to become mm -hmm. accepted, there's a much harder test. And then become full eyes to die, you know, even taking the oath and everything. Um, I'd assume there's some sort of test. Elida. What about her? <laughs> F that me. But uh, who is she? What was she? Red. But what does she do? D's. Is the Amerlin. She's the Amerlin. And how does yeah. she do it? She just took that shit. Yeah, but nobody respects it. It was a vote. It was literally they all got together, the ones that were there, and they were like, "Well." But they voted yes and accepted it because they knew they could control her and manipulate her. So we know how they become Amelyn. They were trying to use There's her a vote. Ah, but she's not the true Amelyn. Hmm. It. What if it's something very similar to like the um, You're clan chiefs that. going to Roydian? Like do maybe think, obviously not going to Roy, but think anybody similar. thought they could control Swan. No, she manipulated and got the vote and she got in. It's politics. Yeah, but how does somebody like Swan from her background get there unless there is some sort of trial that she gets through that's undeniable? <laughs> on no. Your, no, that's the wrong <laughs> on your knees. Uh, we sorry, need the sorry. one where Moraine tells her. <laughs> On your knees. That's when that show is po politics. Yeah, <laughs> politics, politics. That's what it yeah. comes down. Like she if, if it is, then the White Tower the has waters. always been worthless. It has been. Yeah. I mean, there there's a whole reason why we are passage, where we some are. Sort of trial. We lost histories. We lost powers. Even we Luke have... had to carry Yoda on his back and run through fucking a jungle and swing on ropes and vines and shit. I mean, come on. There's got to be a test. Mm -hmm. Well, I think at the end of the day... A position on this council we grant you. <laughs> but rank of master, you are not. <laughs> the fuck is that shit? Mace Windu <laughs> says that? Oh, you are wow. on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. I why should no. I don't I shouldn't know that. I shouldn't fucking it's funnier with, yeah, it's funnier with a fucked up yeah, nerd. impersonation. <laughs> but nerd you might be right. Nerd. I, I'm not kind of getting my head to how you nerd. said it <laughs> well, Do we have anything else about this book to talk about? I have nothing I, about this chapter, uh, but go ahead and hit the highlights, Alan, and we'll comment please, on it. Please, oh light, please is the last words of this chapter. <laughs> As, okay. Yeah. As Sirox smiles, um, as she just killed her warrior. Yeah. And that's how we She's end this a chapter. bad lady. Rape, kill, what do you think about Sharon? Uh, Shatter. Babies. What do you think of Shatter Haran like in the next room over, like listening in? Like, yeah, he's there. He's just chilling, yeah. smiling all creepily. Yeah. He's, he's taking notes for the man in charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the Forsaken he, think they are the right hand man or woman. For the great lord of the dark, but they are not. Yeah, they are pawns. He is the, the great man lord. in charge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just like the part of the conscience. This this oversized Merdral is literally tapped as the right hand man until yeah. until I guess Nablus is actually named. You know, dubbed. Yeah. So. So, uh, anything else we missed from these chapters? I'm sure, sure we missed. I'm sure, we missed a lot. <laughs> I'm sure we did too. <laughs> I don't. It's been, it's been covered. <laughs> I don't even think we've talked about this book tonight. <laughs> this is a I'm great sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's not your fault, Ali. The fact of the matter is, is there wasn't as long as these chapters were. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that much level of importance. It was all character building. Like we no. got more of Matt. Alan, edit that out. We got so deep into what was actually going on here and our relevant stories and everything. True. I mean, we were all up in that shit. We were. So. <laughs> Matt, we, we built Matt up 
we've made him into a more well-rounded character. We've taken the once super lovable character, demonized him, and then we've brought him back to life. And somehow I, mean, I like Grendel. You, I, and it, I didn't like an hour before this started, but now I, I kind of, I kind of want to give her a hug. If you just think of her as like, I kind of want to hug her and tell it's okay. Like it's okay. She babe. It's, was a. You did your best, and it was good. And both and of these women, I Grendel it. and Simrog, were both. Now, mind you, Simrog's a little bit twisted in her methods, but they I did great things. Mm -hmm. They did great things for everyone, and they just wanted a little bit of pleasure in the moment. Yeah. You know, a little bit of feeling of fulfillment. They just want to live, man. They just want to live. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> at this at this point in time. At this juncture. Where things are harder than ever. Giggity. You, <laughs> you kind of you kind of get it. I don't know. Some of it. You do. Like you he, he go, really oh, you're right. The housing market's terrible. And working for a nonprofit sucks. <laughs> and uh, the administration is really against you. Hail Satan. I don't know. I guess he's, he's I guess George, you kind of get it. George is a ma George is a master manipulator. <laughs> That's what we really need to be focused on. He has created no, you always got to look at the editor though. He has created oh, I didn't think about that. His wife. How much did she change? We don't oh, know. His Harriet. Wife. This is all her. <laughs> <laughs> this is all her. <laughs> like, this is where we're getting all this from. Like, it's not his genius. It's hers. I mean, he's put the general gist of the story out there, and she's like, let me just tweak this shit. Real yeah. Quick. This is what you really meant to say, babe. You, you have got to really <laughs> think about how much he has created, how he's created this world where we are all so into it that we're talking and we're, we are, what's the word? It starts with the E. We're engrossed. Engrossed, but no, for, for empathizing. Feeling, empathizing. We are empathizing with these oh. characters. Yeah. In yeah. different moments. In different moments. For right. every character, I, I have moments where I'm said... like, yes, yes, yes. And then I have moments with characters where I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, and, and then I, I go back to I yes, say yes, that yes. About everyone. Okay. I go, there are moments where I empathize with. All of the Emmons fielders, and there are moments where I'm horrified by all of them. Right. Both and extremes. I think that's what's brilliant about the series is that there are moments where I really identify with Egwene, and there are moments where I really am horrified by things she does. And there are moments that I feel that with Nynaeve, same thing. Moments where I'm like, I would never act that way. And, it's and small things or Matt that or Rand or anyone and i kind of go but at the same time we're forgetting always that these are traumatized at the end of the day almost children yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. they are college sophomores and i, I think trying that's why, to run the world i think mm -hmm. that's why chris and i have we've both kind of floated with different characters the possibility that every single one of them could drift to the dark side mm -hmm. and then maybe come back it's like because they're I, human Right, and we don't. I'm not anticipating any one person to be totally bad the whole time. No, or totally good the whole time. Not even the dark one himself. There's gonna be mm -hmm. a what? Well, the dark one's got a role. He's yeah. got a job to play. Like his job title might suck. The job duties might not be what you know. We we would want to sign up for, but somebody's got to do it. Maybe the pay was good and he needed the money. You know. Mm. Yeah, and so like that. Like when you just taking a look at Matt again, when we first enter the scene, it's the gambler, mm -hmm. and then it shifts to the lady lover, and then he goes to the general who won't take advantage of his soldiers and the lover of kids. Like, but even though he won't take advantage of his soldiers. The daily inspections, he has high expectations that he's he, a great he, general. He expects to be maintained. Yeah. Even sure. even those little nuances are tied in there. And and then transition to all right, let me protect the innocent. Also I, very important. Jordan really pulls and plays with your emotions. And then again, I 
I can't help but go back to Simarag and Grendel and think, especially Grendel more more than Simarag. Simarag was twisted from the get go. She did amazing things to heal people, and she took a little bit of she took a little bit from them to fulfill a need that she had in herself that she recognized of it in herself. She knew right. that she was sick and twisted. In so her she, mind, it was a little. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. In her yeah. mind, it was a little. And that's the thing is like, what is a little in your mind and a lot? I mean, I have, I've yeah. had this conversation. I mean, with, we all take a little. Right. I've had this conversation with, with people in my industry where we talk about people who are like, oh, we'll just read this draft that's not even close to done. And it's like, well, you understand that like my doing that is an entire day of my life a lot of the time. Yeah. And it, like things that can be little to some people are not little to other people. Well, so do we grade people on intent from their perspective or do we grade people on the actual effect and result? Well, that's of... the question always. And right? so that's the thing. Like, well, since the world revolves around me, I'm paying attention to the result. Of the me, right? Of like, oh, it's right? a little thing for that's me. That's everybody. And she did great things. She, she did. did things that others could not do. And I feel like if we had one that would flip, it would be the one that gained respect for her awesomeness. If she could say, oh, well, I could reconnect you to the, the one source. Right. Well, it, there are a lot it, of doctors. You got to pay a little bit. For, you gotta, there's going to be a little bit of pain in this, but in that pain, there's going to be a lot of pleasure. Well, I just watched, right? You could like, sell uh, Samurai on pleasure. Dope sick, uh -huh. right? And a lot of the doctors there thought they were doing a good thing, right? Yeah. A yeah. lot of the doctors there thought, oh, well, there are a couple ad people who get addicted. It's a series about the Oxycontin <laughs> right? crisis. Right, the Oxycontin yeah, crisis, which yeah. has affected people that I know very personally, right? But yeah. the folks involved in that thought, well, some people get addicted, right? But it does a lot of good. Mm -hmm. So, what's the logic? It's fine, right? And we're making a lot of money, and a lot of people are really benefiting from this. And not everybody gets addicted, so it's fine. Yeah, you know, you know, it's but worse. There are some people whose <laughs> lives are ruined. Oh my god! From that experience, right? There are a lot of people whose lives are ruined from the experience. And Agreed. so it's like, well, well, also they massively understand, and they yeah, massively there's, there's understand a lot the addiction of it. There's a lot to it. But that. like, you know, it's there are plenty of doctors who have gone. Well, what are the ends? The means are justified, and it's like, well, in retrospect, they weren't. But hmm. now we now we know that in it, in hindsight, I, I feel and like I we, feel like Semrog's an interesting parallel to that. Agreed. In some ways. Whenever we bring up these real life comparisons that hit home, I got to put an asterisk on the specific specific mention of like Oxycontin and drugs like that, that were all sorts of issues there along the way. People tend to think it's people that get into that and then start abusing it. But I personally know a couple of people that were religious in their doctor's appointments and going to pain management oh. and this, that, and the other. And in order for things to be effective and the issues they're having, they have to creep, keep increasing the dosage along the way. And if you were a brand new doctor coming in and looking at what they were taking right now, you were like, holy shit, this person is overdosing on morphine or, or opioids or whatever. But it's just over time because certain things weren't addressed correctly. And they're like, let's just keep feeding drugs towards it. And their tolerance yeah. keeps building. I mean, there's to, to clarify that is what I meant is that I right. know people who it's bad in every it's yeah. been bad in all sorts of directions, every, not just every the demographic. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter where you come mm -hmm. from. Well, it's yeah. a highly addictive substance. So I, yeah. I know people who have gone from zero and then they have a have a medical issue that requires oxycotton, and we didn't know back then or even now how much it can affect a person. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there are plenty of people who start from a place of good, good intentions and things really can snowball. And I think it's an interesting parallel with Semarag where it's like, I mean, I'm not saying that it's a one for one, 
but there are plenty of doctors who set out to do good things. I mean, and sure. in Semarag's case, she was like very negative things. I'll treat you and then I'll torture you a little bit just for kicks. But there are one to one potential parallels. Yes, yeah, do that well. with I mean, there are one to one potential parallels. <laughs> so, so, sounds like a surgeon. Uh, All right. I'm Pick my brother. <laughs> if, if I had stage four cancer and somebody came up to me and they were like, I can cure, cure you, cure you of your cancer and you'll never have cancer again, but I am going to finger your butt every night for the, <laughs> for the next six months. I would take the butt fingering, you know? That's true. So like, but maybe, maybe so maybe her, her problem was not communicating and getting proper consent. You know, that's so how do you think she's going to she deliver Bobby and this baby's? But at the same time, too, it's like if you are somebody who's a sadistic doctor and you're like, I will cure you, but only with the potential that I will torture you after the fact. I mean, like anyone who is in that situation, like you said, would likely sure. say yes. They're, they're but desperate the, here. But the, you know, after effects, you still will have issues with. And you're kind of like, well, was this really medically necessary? You could have also just healed me and we would have been cool. And you would have had your hero moment. Like, why did you need to be a torturer on top of everything else? Because right? there's a very thin line between insanity and like, yeah, like you're like, I'm consenting to this, but also, even if I were consenting under to this, duress. I wasn't yeah. necessarily aware of what I was consenting to, and it was at a desperate moment. It Does that justify what she ends up doing to people? I don't necessarily think so. Hmm. Yeah. And I guess, yeah. It's, it's so. interesting. It's all interesting. Yeah. So, anything else we missed from these chapters? Oh, we did we miss. Pretty thorough. We did miss when Grindel shifted and changed into a frail woman. No, I oh, yeah. talked about that. I did. Yeah, talk about Chris that. mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Chris. Okay. Do we know uh, where Grindel is at this point? Yes, we do. That's yeah, whatever air, air yeah. demand. Whatever she wants to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently. Right. Again, master manipulator. She's so, manipulative. I got in trouble back in the day for talking about how manipulative the Aes Sedai and the women in the book can be. But I say. think personally, the women forsaken are a lot more effective. They are. They're getting stuff done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Alan, what were you so, saying? I was going to say favorite character between Simarog and Grendel, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Favorite character from these chapters. It's really yeah. sick for me to even be thinking about these two as my favorite characters, <laughs> but. I'm more of a, and they both mind fuck them, but see, so that's the thing. <laughs> so Grindel is. I can't believe I can't believe there was a sorry I can't believe there was a conversation with anybody. No offense to anybody who stood up for Samuel between Samuel and Delusions in their encounter. Like Samuel was just he was he was weak all throughout that. He was. I feel like it was it was one sided. He got demolished. I'm sorry. I, sorry to interrupt. I, Chris. Agree. Look, I, I, I agree. I agree with you. Agree with you. I, agree I started with thinking you. about that and just the more but there is there not is that, not that Grendel didn't have losses in that encounter, but she didn't show it. No, but Samuel also she learned from it. He also felt like he had an upper hand on her in moments because he's trying to get her to see things his way, trying to get a partnership really established. He He's seeing himself gain some ground, not knowing that they're setting him up to die. But he revealed new information to try and accomplish that Grendel did not. So she gained from it. And that's what I'm saying. She definitely won, but there was a moment where he thought he was succeeding. And in his mind, he did succeed a little but that's the master manipulation. Exactly. That's that why they want. And that is why Grendel, because Grendel's messing with the be. mind. That's where Semi, um, Simrog is messing with emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so and that's why. she did yeah. not give a safe object. No. It's not cool. No. <laughs> no safe hard. word. And well, before I, you even gag sometimes, safe object, you know, so you can drop yeah. it. <laughs> I like people that mess with the mind more than the emotions. So I'm going to say that <laughs> my favorite character this go around, it was Grendel. Okay. She really, 
and she's gonna help Rand out in the long run. Well, I, I got it. I got to give a shout out to heavens to Betsy. <sighs> Betsy. She she followed Matt's lead, dancing around. I actually appreciated, and we talked about it a little bit. I appreciated that whatever she thought, she just fucking said it. Yep, it does make life easy. Chanel does how, that for me. How many people looked at Matt going, "The fuck's he wearing that scarf for? It is so hot." She just went scarf, burnt, pulls it down. <laughs> oh, you been hung? Was that shit your fault? What the hell's going on? A necklace? <laughs> Did you steal it? Did it? She just, bam, whatever's in her mind comes out. And I need that in my guessing. life. What do you want for dinner? Let me tell you what I want for dinner. Right. I second <laughs> guess so much shit in my own head. I do not need to be second guessing what's in somebody else's head. It would. It's just, I can't handle that right now. So It's so nice. Like, Chanel, what don't you want? And she'll rattle off a few things she doesn't. What about here? All right, sounds good. Yes. Five minute conversation. We're going Got to it. dinner. Got it. Alex is like, eh. <laughs> sorry, Gus. Allie, do you have a favorite character from these chapters? I know. Grendel, hundred yeah. percent. But oh, Summer yeah. was a hot second, and I feel like <laughs> Allie, so, hot. so hot. So <laughs> hot. Personally, I'm a fan of Lord Pears. Stop. Uh, no, you're not. Okay. <laughs> he is beating a child. No, you're not. Okay. No, I'm not. We're going to go on record. We'll take Hallie, this against Brett. beating children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. We, we all know Hallie, my favorite as a, character. As a past teacher, there are Rendell, a hundred percent. There are moments, um, Allie. It's, it's prior teachers. I think she, where she bested Samael in the whole conversation. <laughs> you fantasize what? about it. What? What do you say? As prior, what do you say? As prior what do you teachers, say? there are moments where we have to appreciate pair. Pair? Pairs. No, Pairs. stop. Okay. But. <laughs> No. Ow. Gus, Sorry, get your safe you. object. Get your safe object, <laughs> <Is it> Gus. <laughs> <laughs> but I Rachel. think Rendell came out on top in that Samuel conversation 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Thousand percent. Million percent. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I think she will probably continue in my mind to best Samuel. Mm. Okay. Because I think she's just smarter than him. I think I she think is. I think she's smarter than anyway, him. He's right? what upset because Luz Theron was taller than him and beat him at stones one exactly. time. Exactly. Whatever. That's, well, the, the stones thing is Baylor. Oh, I, whatever. Oh, they Regardless, all freak out about. It, they all have the same issue yeah. with Luz Theron, which is that he was better than them in every way. Which prevents and, them from seeing the big picture. Yes, they, it they're does. not looking at everything. They're very narrow. It Focus. does. Yes, and they're very, yeah. they all have the same freaking plan, which is let me take over a city and become the most popular guy there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Boring. Mm -hmm. Dull. Boring. Stupid. Um, very obvious. Boys. Transparent. You, you can Boys. be on this show yeah. whenever you want, Allie. I'm digging all of that. <laughs> yeah, I can, you can have me on the show whenever, whenever you want. I'll be whenever here. Whenever you want. 100%. But Grendel, to me, smarter than Samael. Shows it in this chapter. She's yeah. playing the game within the Demarag, game within the game. Hot second, like a doctor who knows what she's doing, knows exactly the right buttons to push. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. 10 out of 10 would watch. I can what give she you does. pleasure yeah. enough to where you take out your own tongue. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a sadomasochist. This is so good. Are you enjoying it also? Ah, shit, you're dead. Uh -huh. Damn it. Oh, shit, <laughs> I mean, I would just, I would There's watch that. what she does from here on out, right? Oh, would you not gosh. watch what she does from here on out? It, it's, it's, I a, mean, it, it's a praying mantis. I'm going to look behind me and make sure she's not there. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you're like, I kind of want to see what she does. To other people. Just I want to know, Alan, Alan yeah. what was your favorite character? Oh, Tamanis. <laughs> Oh, it's your boy. That was an My easy boy. Out, so apparently he's gonna die soon. Because look, Always you gotta read and find out, man. I'm not gonna tell yeah. you. Raffo. You gotta give oh, Oliver his Oliver. props. Oliver. Oh, all, uh, good, good oh. smelly yeah. child. Not smelly Oliver. Child. But his rolled up. Smelly as fuck. I've dealt with enough smelly children. Got a bad. Thank you. Absolute fucking legend. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I will go and record and say that. I like Oliver's like it's not milk in the system for freebies. All hail Oliver. 
If we all pulled an Oliver, I mean, who would actually do the work? Oliver, like, yeah. it's a gelding. Who would harvest the <laughs> crap? I know, horse. Who would? Yeah. And Matt was like, ah, oh, oh, the kid knows horses. The kid's there's, chill as hell. There's, 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 right, it's yeah. not a stone. You know? All right. He can be third favorite all of right. the chapters. So I'll put him at sixth. Yeah. At best. Betsy's third. Betsy's number one for Ian. I, I care. Matt. I care about Betsy. The so yeah, I, I was talking about the goat, not the person. So, yeah. so, so next time, uh, we're doing two chapters again, seven and eight. Uh, a matter of thought and the storm gathers. Mm. Mm. Yeah. A yeah, matter so of mean, thought. You know who thinks a lot? Perrin. Is this a Perrin chapter? I, well, I, mm. I, didn't even, I didn't even look and see what, but it might be. Oh. Mm hmm. And then a, a gathering of what? Uh, the storm gathers. The storm gathers. The... She's trying to hide her expressions. Yeah. And I'm killing it at it. <laughs> You're killing it. Slay. Are you looking at the next chapters and what happens? Yeah. Yep. They're just Ooh. rubbing it in your face, Chris. Mm. They not only do they know, but they confirmed their knowledge of knowing. double checked just to make sure. <laughs> I'm gonna confirm that I am looking at right now what happens. And Is they still won't say worth coming on another night for. <laughs> if you want to invite me on for another episode, I will be here. I mean, we've made these two chapters three hours of podcast, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. They okay. Make sure Alan. How make sure long the, would those two chapters be? That's the question. At least make, three hours. No, make sure are. they are nothing chapters. Here's <laughs> here's the thing. Here's gonna, the thing. You know what? I promise something you out of nothing. that if. If we got invited on for long chapters, for like meaty chapters, that we would not make you go on longer than three we did hours. seven hours about the eighth episode of the show. Stop talking. Talk I'm trying to get us back on the podcast. It will be Allie. Allie. You guys, you guys are invited. Alan already Shut knows up. we could record for however long it takes. And then if need be, he can cut, cut it down. He could cut it, he could cut it into two and release them separately. Oh, it actually helps yeah. us get ahead. If we go, go for, if we go for six hours, it helps us. We are oh. content. We are content. That's right. You help <laughs> us get ahead in episodes. Uh, you guys are great. No, you so guys last, are. Last battle. Sign up for it. We'll sign up for it. Yeah. I'm already. Yeah. I'm already signed up. Yeah. We we may finish before you. We may not. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a. It, it's interesting the pacing. Do you get to read that? So I'm sorry. I know I'm going to kind of go off off of the whole event, and we're trying to wrap up. But what pace are you reading at? It's usually two a week. We sped up intermittently in book six. We're gonna sped. We're gonna continue to speed up from time to time, uh, in seven through eleven. Gotcha. Okay. Seven through ten. In the doldrums, you're gonna turn the motor on. Is what you're saying? You drop sales. Turn the motor. What we're on. saying is I don't we're like gonna to, do I don't one like book to say in the six slog, episodes. But we are gonna do one book in six episodes. I'm not gonna say which book, but if you've read all of them, you know which book. Yeah. It's also the shortest book of the series. Not that book. Not that one. Oh, well, not New yeah. Spring. I'm talking about... Oh, You'll You're have talking to... about eight. I'm not talking about eight. I'm oh, no. About... We've already oh, finished New okay. Spring. We read yeah. New Spring. We already did New Spring. Oh. Okay. Okay. So we know something you don't. Gus is nicer than Alan. That's yeah, why I, well, I was, I was going to do the publication order. <laughs> we did New <laughs> Spring because we thought the show was going to do some New Spring stuff. Which it kind of did. It really didn't. Like a little tiny. It did a little bit. tiny bit, not Dabbled. enough to justify it. But I mean, you enjoyed no. it. I did. I I loved how gay it is. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I guess from my perspective, it depends on which direction of gayness we're going. <laughs> but I think you'll. I think you'll like it. Not that I I'm like negative it. towards one. I'm just more positive towards. Another. Yeah, I agree with you. Guys. And I'm positive <laughs> I'm towards both. Yeah, so, yeah. That's but I that, think knowing you, you may like the direction it, it goes in. Yeah. <laughs> so hey -o. Hey -o. Um so next week, new spring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um so uh, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, this thank is, you for letting oh, us ramble for on all this. Oh, no, no, this is awesome. anytime you want us back, we are happy to be how, here. How about how about for the fi the final? Uh, do my spot? No, I'm joking. 
<laughs> no, he look. said it. If two weeks. Oh. Said it. Two I think, weeks I later. I don't think we're gonna have any guests well. off. I don't think we're gonna yeah. have any guests off or do my. No, yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. No, okay. for the final. It's gonna here. be open forum live on a Saturday, and we're gonna start in the morning. And uh, for the last battle. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Can we be I'm here sh- before? Gus, are you? Yes, 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 Alan. Wait, what? Are you, oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you are you breaking up the last battle? Or are you gonna do it all in one episode? Oh, we're not doing the last battle in one episode. It's just, okay. it's it's two hundred pages long. I know. <laughs> wait, Alan, 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 can we be here prior to the Mars Wells? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll I'll, chat. I'll, 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 we'll okay. chat. Yeah. I'm dying. Okay. We'll suss it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you want. Whatever you yeah. want. It's your podcast mostly. Now so I know I, we do have a few guests that are coming on soon. Um, um, we haven't picked out dates yet, but um, I know um, like uh, Nerdy Nightly. I don't know if you guys watch them at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're they're going to come on once they catch up. Nice. Because they're behind us and they're reading at a really fast pace. Um, okay. So, Well, um, whenever you like, we're okay. always happy to be here. Thank you for having Yay. us. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks yeah. for coming. Y'all are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Allie and Gus, where can we find you? Oh, yeah. Hey, we're called Wheel Takes Podcast. It says that under us. But if you're listening to this, you don't know that. We're on uh, book seven. We just now are starting book seven. Our book six finale will be coming out either. We're about to go record the finale episode. We are. So we'll see how how much stamina we have for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're all over the place. Discord. Discord. Mm-hmm. You just you just hit me up and uh, we'll we'll hang out and talk about books and you can listen to us talk about books. It's fun. Yeah. These books, The Wheel of Time in particular, just to be clear, this is not a podcast about other books. And yet. we're married. That's that's, that's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's Officially that's as of last September. That's us. That's awesome. Yeah. And and it's got to be a great marriage because I'm looking at you and listening to you guys, and I don't know who's luckier. So maybe Aww. that means both of you are. <laughs> I'm luckier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how how cute! By it's, the way, it's Miss, definitely oh. Gus. <laughs> Miss Bourne has been phenomenal. No, by wait, the way. it's me who is luckier that I have Gus. That's what I meant to say. There you yeah. go. There you go. Miss Bourne is phenomenal for those that need another book. Miss Bourne, I, I started it as Alan has told me to. We have been talking about. Cosmere next. Yeah. yeah. Yes. When yeah. we're done with Mistborn's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. The magic After... system. It's one of my favorite magic systems ever. Like it's just so much fun. <laughs> it is pretty cool. <laughs> After reading, you know, Skyward and all of those, and then finding out that there's still another book and I gotta wait for a minute. I'm like, all right. So I guess I do like some Sanderson. So Mistborn's yeah. been awesome. Yeah. Cool. So how we can be found is same as uh, well, not exactly the same as Alan and Gus, but um, on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, oh, all, yeah, TikTok. All, all, all the places. Yeah, we, I, we, we don't do as well as you got. You guys produce TikTok. MySpace. I, I get oh. on the I, I put my phone up and I'm just like, hi guys, I have an episode coming out. I'm watching. Uh, <laughs> we just mess around. I just, uh, I, I love TikTok. Fans, fans from, only. From like the, the deepest only part of my soul. So I'm always like on the, on the clock app. Yeah. So, yeah. if you want to see silly TikToks about the wheel, check out time, Alan's. Alan. Yeah. <laughs> and also the artists oh, also you ours. want, but go to Alan's yeah. first. But Alan, and, first. and you can also go to our website and find links to everything. It's thewillreads.com. Uh, they'll have links to all sorts of things, like like our episodes, our YouTube, our um, baby clothes, uh, our merch, our baby clothes, our merchandise. We do sell baby clothes. Um, we have our own baby clothes line. I'm wearing one of the baby shirts right now. Yeah, we have onesies. <laughs> we do have onesies. I think we have three, three oh, you strapping. Yeah. Um, so if you have kids are expecting, we do have onesies uh, for kids. We're not, for not but um, we'll buy one anyway. Oh yeah, the, um, you know they what? Make great Alan, gifts. They make great Alan, gifts. Um, Alan, yeah. just se- just send them one. Just send them one straight oh, out of Tarvalon. Sure. Send them one. Straight, yeah. Or just, just in one, case, it says just left Tarvalon. Oh, I did. I did tell Gus. I was <laughs> like, <"You> might... <laughs> <laughs> I told Gus, I was like, we might have kids before we finish this book series. Oh, that's... <laughs> having a baby going. wear a just left Tarvalon uh, oh, onesie. My yeah, God. what's better? <laughs> so th- this will be telling. If Gus has no plans to have children, he's gonna try and put it on like a man thong. He's like, how does this? Where do I? Put the legs where does this go 
I just, need yeah. more flexibility uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. Just like we plan on having fun. kids before the end. So I told yeah. Gus, I was like, we might have kids before the end. At of our this pace, podcast. it's entirely possible. There you Please go. Was it, um, All right, Alan, send him one. Alan, send him two. We would take a kit picture of it, of it in it. <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, onesies you can get that with stickers, all sorts of stuff in the store. So Wait, the the store, all baby girl sports... was born right beforehand, but how far? How before? Before, Alan? What? <laughs> number how two. What? How far before was number two born before we started? Uh, number two is uh, we started in January. Baby two was born in November. Yeah, like you had this brainchild before you had her. Whoa. Wait, you're on three now oh. or four? I'm at and three. Danny and Brett had number two while they were doing the pod. Yeah. So yeah, so the the onesies we have napping and intention. I just keep collecting them from other people. We have just <laughs> left Tarvalin, born with the spark, and mother's milk in a cup are our onesies. So we that's what you named your children? No, those are our, those are our onesies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what kind of have you agreed to that? What? Yeah, I mean, I love it, kids. but gee. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it's a good check it out. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, go support us on Patreon too. We're adding new perks um, all the time. Actually, there's a couple of reworking I'm doing. I haven't finished that yet, but yeah, go check it out. Um, come patron. Come I heard there's us. one where you might get to see Ian in the shower. That's <laughs> only fans. That's only fans. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. So that's all I have for this week, guys. Until next time. Peace. Thank you for having us. Okay, bye. Toodles. Oh,